<laughs> okay. I read your book when you sent it to Bert. Mm-hmm. And because you know Bert doesn't read. <laughs> you don't read. He doesn't read. He's dyslexic. He don't read. So he had me read it for him. And then I was like, this is one of the best books I've ever read. I've read it twice. I read it for my in my podcast for a book club. And we all had the same reaction. So with your show, I hope it drives more people to go back and want to know more about you and read your book. So how hard was it for you to write that book? Well, I had a co I had a co uh a yeah. co author. So it was just really digging I mean telling stories. The hardest part was getting really personal mm-hmm. and for her to the honesty that she brought, like when she told me when I was like, I would tell her a story and she wanted to put it in the book about my mom. And I was like, no, nah, you can't say that about my mom. She's like, You're protecting the person who hurt you the most. Mm. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Mm-hmm. She And then even with my first kid's father, and she was like, you're protecting the people who hurt you the most. You got to let go. And that was that was an eye opener for me because I was still, you know, I would tell these stories. But to me, I didn't realize how unprotected she left me as a kid mm-hmm. until I wrote this book. Right. So it was, it was hard. We cried a lot. I bet. We cried a lot. I cried a lot. <laughs> I cried a lot reading the book. Really? But it was a, it did. was it was such a healing moment with this book and it's still doing so well. Good. Um it 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 it, it made me realize a lot about my life. Mm-hmm. It made me realize <laughs> my life was really shitty cuz I thought everybody grew up the way I did. Right? It's amazing when you realize that they don't. They didn't. They didn't. I didn't have nearly the life you had, but I did not have a typical childhood and I, yeah. I did not have a completely happy or balanced childhood. It was pretty rough sometimes, nothing like what you experienced, but still it wasn't regular. And at a certain point, I remember thinking the same thing. Wait a minute. Not everybody had someone try to adopt them because your mom sucked. Not everybody had that. But anyway, here's something that I learned about myself from reading your book. I learned how little I understood uh, black culture. Oh, wow. I, I didn't, I never professed myself to know black culture to start with, but I was embarrassed and kind of ashamed at how little I understood that all the stuff I had been taught as a child was so narrow. Yes, because they want to protect the white kid. Exactly. They don't want to tell you how fucked up America really is, and they don't want to tell you that white privilege is real. Now, and, and it poor, is they real. Want to say, they, don't, they want to say poor is the same across the board. It's not. It's not. No, it's white not. poor is different from black poor. Complete. White poverty is different from black poverty. Mm-hmm. It just is, and it I'm is. being honest. It, I, I completely agree, and... That was one of the things I talked to my ladies about, how we were all really kind of embarrassed at how little we understood. Um, I think you wrote that book with no blame, with no anger, no anger. with n- no agenda. Mm-mm. Your agenda, in my opinion, was to tell your story That's and it. have that story resonate with other people who had pieces of your experience maybe not everybody have everything but they there's some piece that almost everybody that's had some kind of abuse or neglect or hardship can relate to and to heal from it because when you find someone else that's done something that you can relate to that's bad you bring each other up i think if it's done the right way well and that's how i do my comedy also yes people like you know when i when you when a lot of times you see black folks that they would say when you see black folks that were raised or been through what I've been through, they want to blame somebody. Mm-hmm. I don't blame anybody. I was I was born into a cycle mm-hmm. of poverty. Mm-hmm. You know what happened? It was it, it was way before my granddaddy and his daddy. It was just it it was just a circle. Mm-hmm. A cir- I just happened to was able to get out of that fucking circle. Mm-hmm. I'm not angry. 
No. Um, you know, I know that the only thing I ever wanted in life was to be loved. Mm-hmm. All I ever wanted was a real family, you know, because I grew up watching Leave It to Beaver. Mm-hmm. You know, and people ask me all the time, why aren't you mad? Why aren't you angry? Why aren't you, you know, you've been molested. You know, you've been shot. You know, you've been, been, a, you've been in an abusive relationship. Why aren't you angry? Because when you angry or you hate something or somebody that takes energy, why it am I going to give you my energy? Mm-hmm. I could be doing something good with my energy, like Chick-fil-A drive through or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that with you all day. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't have a reason to be angry. I'm happy. I got a good life. You know, I, I woke up the other day yesterday and I was like, sometimes I get on. I woke up yesterday and I just felt a spirit of happiness. Sometimes I get on the plane and I try not to think about it. Mm-hmm. And I said, wow. I'm really fucking blessed. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm a chick with an eighth grade education. And, you know, I, I had two kids by the time I was 15. I made a lot of mistakes and I got some pretty decent kids. And I, I mean, I look at my life and I, I, I know what I'm working on and where I come from and where I'm headed. Sometimes I shed tears. Mm-hmm. I try not to think about it a lot mm-hmm. because I try to, I'm the type of person, whatever I do, I put it in the back. It just work. It just work. It just work. And people like, do you ever enjoy it? And I was like, no, nah, nah, I don't try to, I don't try to celebrate. Mm-hmm. You know, I just try to keep it moving. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I know my accomplishments. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't need, I don't need it to be plastered all over the place. I don't need nobody to bow down to me. I mean, I know I'm blessed. Mm-hmm. And, so when you finished the book, did it make you feel um, a lot stronger as a person? Like when you really put down on paper all the things that you went through and all all the people you were, because you were different people at yeah. different ages in your <laughs> life, playing different roles. And now to look at all that on paper, did it make you go, I am one fucking powerful person? No, I it didn't. didn't? Think that. I didn't. I don't think about it. You know, it was funny because my, my, uh, they always... Quisha, my friend Quisha was trying to get me hey you this and I said no I'm not no. and I think <clears throat> I tell people all the time I think it because of the abuse that I, I, I got as a child mm-hmm. and some stuff sticks with you no matter how much you try to fight That's it off absolutely it right. sticks with you and, mm-hmm. and one of the things that sticks with me is my mama when I've cheesed something it's this voice in my head that still tells me I ain't shit mm-hmm. and I work each and every day to fight against that person. Mm-hmm. But I know it's my mama. Mm-hmm. When she say, you ugly, you ain't shit. And, you know, when I get a big accomplishment, like when I won the top 10 variety, a lot of people go post. That's why I don't post. Mm-hmm. Because I don't I, I don't post because I don't feel like, I think I feel like she wouldn't be happy. If I, and she's no longer here. Yeah, yeah. And it's mental. And I tell people, I say it's mental. Right. And people are like, w- w- why don't you celebrate? And why, Do you think she'd say something like you're showing your ass now and you've been bragging on yourself or something like that? I think that's the feeling I get because right, right. it was never compliments with her. Right. And, you know, a, a parent is a strong individual in your life. Mm-hmm. And when you, you, you know, when you... I mean, I wasn't the best mama in the beginning and I still make a lot of fucking mistakes. But my, I think my kids know I love them. Mm-hmm. I think my kids know when it come down to it, I'm there for them. I didn't have that feeling. Right. And that's so what I, you wanted. That's what I wanted. Yeah. But I have this thing in my head where I'm always trying to prove to this lady who's no longer here how good I really am. Because I had a third grade teacher who told me I can do it in, do and be anything in the world. Mm-hmm. So when you got these two different elements on your shoulder, you're constantly fighting against yourself. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why I don't celebrate. Right, right. Because people say, why don't you celebrate? Mm-hmm. And I say, oh, just keep it moving. Let's keep moving. Just keep it moving. And well, I, I don't like to celebrate. I don't like to boast. Um, um, I, 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 sometimes I have to, I have to slap myself sometime because I don't think I'm as good as people say I am, mm-hmm. which is mental. Mm-hmm. Definitely. You know, when people say you remind me of of um, uh, Richard Pryor, I shrink hmm. because that's a big fucking yeah. thing to be compared to. That is huge. And I have people come up every night and say, oh, my God, you remind me of Richard Pryor. Uh, and but. I know I got stories like Richard Pryor. Mm-hmm. I, and he's like, oh my God, you're a great storyteller. And I was like, don't put me on that pedestal. And, and I, I know it's common, but it, it's, it's, it just has a lot to do with the abuse that I endured as a child. 
Right. And I'm so I'm such a workhorse mm -hmm. where I just rather work than to enjoy what I've achieved. Right. You'll outwork it. I yeah, try. Yeah, outwork the feeling. Not with my new friend over there in the corner. This bitch wants to celebrate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it is kind of good to at least go check. I did that, even if it's something small. I mean, I'm not good at celebrating either. But, uh, you know, I was a writer before Bert and I were married. And when I sold my first screenplay, I bought this necklace because I thought every time I put it on, I want to remember that I did that. Now, that's all I did. I didn't have a party, but I bought something that marked it for me. That I do. meant something. I do. You know what I do is when I when I sell something big, mm -hmm. I I like purses. Mm -hmm. So I go buy me a really expensive purse. So that's a celebration. It, well, well, I guess I celebrate like that. It's so, privately. Well, you know, well, I wanted this purse, and so I'm going to go get it. Or I do something that I really want. But I'm not like the party type. Right, right. I'm not like to get on the social media like, I'm killing you niggas. I'm not that type of person. Yeah, I don't know anybody like that. Uh -huh. The, the I do. person I'm married to, maybe. <laughs> so another thing I wanted to talk to you about in the book, I, this is something that you also, I, I swear to you, Pat, I read the book and it changed the way I looked at the world. Thank it you. It really did. So when you went to school hungry and you went in the coat closet and you got in somebody's <laughs> lunchbox and you ate their lunch, I had a moment in my brain where I went, I am an asshole. Because I would have looked at that kid and gone, thief. And I wouldn't have looked any deeper. Not about your color, but about the fact that someone walked in the coat closet and stole somebody's lunch. I wouldn't have looked any deeper. I was so ignorant as a person. Well, that's society for you. Because you take, you know, like, I, and I tell, I get that a lot from teachers. Mm -hmm. It's mainly white teachers when I first dropped this book. Mm -hmm. I said, you think a kid is bad at school, they're not bad. Mm -hmm. You don't know what goes on at that household. Mm -hmm. Those kids in that second grade probably have to go home and become a fucking adult mm -hmm. and take care of their younger siblings or their oldest sibling or their mama on drugs. You don't know what that kid had to go home and endure. Mm -hmm. So when they get to school, instead of getting their lesson, they just want to be a kid. Mm -hmm. But you want to label them as retarded something special or bad nobody ever takes time to dig to see what's really going on with the child they just want to check off this is what's wrong with the child right i wasn't a bad kid i wasn't loved mm -hmm. i was a kid that didn't get a lot of food mm -hmm. that's why when um um that's why when when i was when, when i had kids i made sure that my food was never an issue right i made i was a kid that did not dress well and I made sure my kids was clean, but I also made a lot of mistakes. I carried a lot of my stuff from my mama over. Well, in the beginning, I would call my kids bitches and hoes because that's what I was called until it, it took a lot of turning around. I like I made a lot of mistakes with those first two. A lot of mistakes with a bunch of my kids. I mean, I was a mom. I was a kid raising a kid. Right. But, but what do that, you expect? Yeah, you were so young. I was 14 yeah. when I had the first child. That's so young. But that's just society. That's yeah. what they that's what they do. They don't take time. To get to the root of the problem. Well, you know, you're right. So many people cut me off when I was a drug dealer and said that, uh, oh, she's a drug dealer. She ain't this. She ain't that. Leanne, I had two babies at 15. Mm -hmm. I was uneducated. Mm -hmm. All I wanted to do was take care of my kids. Mm -hmm. All my goal was is I knew them two kids loved me. My goal was to take care of them and make sure that I did, they did not get molested and went through the shit that I went through. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to say and say that they didn't go through shit, but they didn't go through them two things. Right, right. I don't give a fuck how much I cuss them out or how much I uh, yell and scream. They know I got them. Right. They know I love them. Right. And that's what the what's, that, that what was important to me. Mm -hmm. Like what I said earlier on Burt podcast when I said when my daughter went to college and say, I don't have a molestation story. I remember hanging up that phone and crying because I know how many times my mom and boyfriend molested me. I know how many times my uh my my mom I was molested at them. It's so many stories that I will not tell. Sure. Uh and it just not I would just I won't tell on certain people. Mm -hmm. You know, because yeah. in deep down in my heart, I've forgiven them. Mm -hmm. You know, and these people are still in my life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's but when we did, I'm not saying you should talk about any of that, but when you talk about what you talked about in the book, mm -hmm. I think it gives, I talk about this in my life. I just talked about this with my kids. We went to Montana and we walked in this grocery store that was covered in like taxidermy heads of like deer and 
mm-hmm. and uh, mountain lions and all this stuff because Montana's a big hunt. I mean, everybody yeah. hunts there. And my kids were just appalled. And I said to them, I didn't even see the animals because I grew up in rural Georgia. There's yeah. deer heads everywhere, yeah. convenience store everywhere. But there's no allowance these days for any experience other than your own. Yeah. So I grew up in Southern California. Nobody has taxidermy shit in their house. But they do in in Georgia. So I was like, this is a good time for you to think, how is this person's experience of life different than mine? And how can I not judge them from that and just say, who are you and how do you approach the world? And I really, I swear to God, your book is the reason I started thinking like that because I thought to myself, there was so many times in that book where I went, I am a narrow-minded white asshole. I am a narrow-minded white asshole. And it's it's not my fault necessarily, but it is my responsibility once I have seen that I am incorrect to change the way that I move through the world. That's my yeah. responsibility to change it. And I feel like if somebody, if if half the people that read your book had the same reaction I had, we'd well, we start changing the world. We'd start changing the world. That's why I sell that book at every show, because I get, I get that I get that same thing. And especially from white America, mm-hmm. they, you know, they would go in my inbox. If I could show you the stuff that I get in my inbox and it was like, thank you for writing this book. I'm I learned so, so much about the world and I, I'm, you know, I judge and I this, you know, would you it's it's like this. Each one teach one. Mm-hmm. You don't know until it's put out there. That's right. And a lot of times. You know, this world know how to protect certain people from certain things. Mm-hmm. We as black America, we endure every fucking thing mm-hmm. because they allow us to endure everything. But like, look at look at Texas trying to take out uh, the whole thing about uh, slavery out of school. They want to teach you false history because they want to protect the white kids. Mm-hmm. Now, I think that's Texas who's doing that shit. It's huh? yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure Texas it's Texas who's doing yeah. it. It's Texas. You know, why not tell people that? White America wasn't shit in the beginning, but we as white America now is trying to make up. That was our, that's our history. We right. can't change history. No. But I'm not that person. Mm-mm. But this is not how we see America today. Mm-hmm. But instead, they'll keep just buried and buried and buried. And act like everything is, you know, is, is hunker do happy. But it's not. It's not. And it's uh, even like with police shooting. I was telling somebody the other day, I said, you know, people like he just should have cooperated. So I say, always take time to no matter what the fuck you're going to judge somebody on. I want you to just take time to put yourself in that situation and see if you will still have that same answer. So if you think that the police is shooting black people because they're not cooperating in the back of their heads, I want you to take two minutes and take that situation, remove that nigga. And put your white child there or put your white self there and tell me, is it okay to blow the back of your fucking brains out because you don't show your ID or you smoked a little weed or you didn't want to cooperate? Mm -hmm. That's how Mm -hmm. you get an open mind. Because when 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 I see stuff on TV, this is when I knew that my mind open. When O.J. Simpson was accused of killing uh, that white woman, Nicole. Mm-hmm. we as a black American, we cheered when he got off. Mm-hmm. When I got a little bit older and I realized that he took this woman from her kids, her mama, her daddy, somebody they love. Mm-hmm. And I put myself there mm-hmm. and I said, would I want somebody to cheer for my killer? Mm-hmm. If that was, I mean, even though he got off. Somebody killed that woman Mm -hmm. and took her away from her fucking family. And that's when I realized that I was closed minded Mm. because somebody loved those two people who died that day. Mm -hmm. So I don't just go and just jump and say, oh, it's a white woman got killed. I look at it. I put myself in that situation before I try to voice my opinion. Wow. That's good advice. And that's how you should do. Mm -hmm. When a police officer kills somebody that don't look like you or beat somebody like the like the two police officers who had the lady was walking down the street, a white lady. And she was kind of a little uh, I think she was autism or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they broke her arm Mm -hmm. because, you know, she 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 was mentally ill. Yeah. And she walked up and she walked out of the store with something Mm -hmm. and and then paid for $15. Yeah. And instead of treating her like a human being, they slammed her to the ground and broke her fucking whole arm. 
And people was like, you know, the po- they fired him and they should have fired him and they should have locked their asses up. Right. I put myself in that situation mm-hmm. as a black per- black per- as a black person, you've probably been treated way worse. But would you want somebody to treat your loved ones who who don't is not too bright up there, mm-hmm. who forgot to pay for something and mm-hmm. break their fucking arm no. and be sitting at a desk bragging about it? That's what's wrong with us. We only see what's in front of us and what makes us comfortable and we don't step outside of that bo- box. So it's okay for the police to shoot a 12-year-old boy in the park because he was playing with a toy gun. Right. But if you put your white child in that, that position, you wouldn't you wouldn't agree with that. No, hell no. So no. that's what's, you know, that's I think that's why I'm not angry. Uh, that's why I try to write with an open mind. I try at my show, I don't preach, but I try to, you know, I try to tell people when they, uh, I about my situation, don't feel sorry for me. I'm here for all of us. Because mm-hmm. just because you might have didn't go through the child molestation, maybe the next story I tell you can relate to. Well, not just that. It's trauma is trauma. Trauma is trauma. Everybody has trauma on some level. I mm-hmm. mean, most people do. And when you can elevate trauma to a place of healing and laughter, then it heals and everybody we in the heals, room. It, I, I tell them that all the time. Every time I walk on stage, it's a healing moment for me. It's a gift. So it's a, we're laughing together. It's and it's okay gift. to laugh. It's the past. Why am I dwelling? You can't change the past. I can't dig up the people that done me wrong. I can't change the family that I'm born into. Well, that's just prison in and of itself if you stay trapped in hating that. Yeah. You got a freedom is a forgiveness. Not forgetting, but forgiving. Yeah. And saying, this is, you know, there's a reason you had that. I super believe in God, and I believe that you have that path so you can be here. Uh, you so know, you can change other people. I, sometimes I think I say, am I the chosen one for this shit? <laughs> well, not that you would want it. Not that you go, you know what? This life, I'm going to well, take all well, God, this trauma. But God do know how much you can take. Yes. And God do know your heart. Yes. And, um, you know, I don't know why I went through the stuff I went through, but I always know that he he had my back. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember taking custody. I have custody of my four niece, four, my niece, four kids. Mm-hmm. And I remember saying, Oh, I don't want these fucking kids, God. I can't do it. <laughs> and I remember, God, I'm not lying. I swore my hand to God. And I heard a voice say, I got you. Oh. A couple weeks later, I sold a TV show. That's amazing. A couple weeks later, I, 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 uh, my TV show, or I sold a TV show or, or was, it was really getting the takeoff. And I said, I can't do it, Lord. I don't have the money. And I remember a voice saying, I got you. And the way God set me up to go take those kids, I was literally passing the Glenwood exit and my niece called and said, we homeless in a hotel and we ain't got no food. Can you bring me some food? I said, where are you? How the fuck you knew I was in Atlanta? And she said, uh, I don't even know what the fuck she said. She said, I'm on Glenwood. It was my fucking next exit. That's insane. I literally got off the exit, made a right, and they was in this fucking hotel. And she was pregnant with her other baby. And I remember walking away and, and, and I just had this feeling like God said, I, I need you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, I got this big ass house in Indiana. I got these two kids. I mean, we living the best life. I don't got time for this shit. I got a career trying to take off. And and so God fixed it where I sat up with a, a, a Christmas dinner with my cousin, which I hadn't did, never did before ever. And that's when my niece got in the car and went home with me. And I, I wrote a whole bit about having a panic attack and all of that. But I remember I said, I don't have the money. I don't want to go big at no church. And he said, I got you. Mm. And, and I never looked back. And he did. He had you. He it, had life me. just, yep. It just, it just it. took That's off. That's amazing. It's, I think, I listened. And it literally fucking took off. Right. And, and all through this whole TV, my show up and down, what is going to get made, I never were. Now, I shed some tears from being pissed the fuck off. Right. But I never felt like it wasn't going to make it to TV. Right. So now, what do you think in you made you a listener? Like when God talks to you like that, because not everybody listens. I call it, I don't, you know, I don't go to church. I don't tie, but I say spirits. Like I can mm-hmm. pick up on, I can, I can walk into a room and I tell people this all the time. I can feel your spirit. Mm-hmm. And if it rattles me, I'm mm-hmm. like, let's get the fuck out of here. Mm-hmm. That motherfucker crazy. That's the devil. <laughs> right. I've said that many motherfucking times. Um, it just spirits connect me to people mm-hmm. because I think I, I believe because I, I don't have a family base other than my kids and my husband so i collect people as family mm-hmm. and so i could just tell a genuine person mm-hmm. 
And if if you're not genuine, my spirit will back the fuck up off of you. Right. And I tell you, hey, my spirit rallying with that bitch. Something wrong with her. <laughs> or my spirit tell me get the fuck on. I said, get the fuck. That motherfucker ain't right. And I don't be wrong either. Right. That's part of the listening. Have yeah. you always been that way? I think since a bitch got shot a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> you got a quick learner. Quick learner. Either you get your head blown off or you get... Because there was times I was sitting out there and my mind said, get the fuck up and go home. Bam, the whole block get busted. How about that? Yeah, so, I mean... That's crazy. It's it just spirits for me. I pick up, I connect to people, their energy. Mm-hmm. I just can tell a good person. Right, right. I can tell when you fucking being genuine and, and, and honest. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I think that's part of the whole thing. Listen to God and him saying, hey... Well, I got you. you. I got you. Yeah. Awesome. And it has not been a struggle. He placed, it's like he placed the right people in my life. Mm-hmm. He placed people that really care. I don't, my sister's on drugs. I really don't have a family. You know, they, they fucks with me from time to time. But I got to say, I got some really good friends mm-hmm. that has came into my life that, that replaced my sister and gave me the love that I didn't have. Right. You know, you know. As a as a girl, they wanted wanted to have a relationship with her sister. Mm-hmm. I got a friend that I can confide in. I got somebody that's always there and got my back. I know who I can call on. You got a sister. Yeah. I so got you three. don't have to be born. <laughs> I am an only child and I've got three sisters also. Yeah. That I just would die for. And yeah. they would for me. And mm-hmm. I'll be with them forever. And I found them all in LA when I was in my thirties. And we're just we're fucking ride or die, and I love them to pieces. And yeah. I don't have any. You don't have to be born into a family no, to have a don't. family. No, you sure you don't. really don't. No, I mean, you like don't. I told you when the pandemic hit, and and he texts me, "Are you good?" You know, I I, I was talking to Rogan. He's like, "I really love you," and yeah. I can tell he's really fucking genuine. Yeah. You know when they when they when they check on you, you, you just I collect people, and yeah. people collect me because I I know that they know who the fuck I am. Right. I mean, I might cuss you out, but that don't mean I don't give a fuck about you. Well, I would imagine that would mean that you mean that, you did, that person means even more to you because you care enough to cuss them out. Yeah, because if I don't, I'd be like, get that motherfucker away from me. Yeah, get right. Get that motherfucker away That's from me. I, I don't be bothered with that motherfucker, that yeah, right. bitch. It's something wrong with that hoe. Get away from me. Well, I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Thank you. You and I talked about this show a long time ago a long when it was time first ago. going. I, I'm so glad that it's here. I enjoy, I sincerely enjoyed it so much. I'm going to sign up for BET Plus. See so that white people it. are signing up for BET Plus. I'm going to, <laughs> of course, because I got to watch the rest of the show. I got to watch the other nine. Thank you. It was really, really good. And it's, it's, it's I'm telling you, the finale is going to fucking floor you. Oh, I can't wait. Text me. You had never seen a finale like this. I can't wait. You you know, and you know what was crazy? Because I asked the, cre- the co-creator, I said, God damn, am I on comedian? Or is this comedy or dramedy? Those are the levels that we went through to in this sitcom. That's great. Yeah. But you know, I mean, you know who else did that really well was the Cosby show. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they'd have some pretty serious episodes and sometimes they'd be goofy and funny. And I think... Not that you're the Cosby show because you're you're dirty like you curse. I say what the fuck I want to say. You do. And I loved it. I thought it was just so. That's great. why we named it a grown folks sitcom. <laughs> and you can watch it with your you can watch it with your ugly ass kids if you want. To. <laughs> if you want to. If you're comfortable with that, then Pat's comfortable with that, too. Right. Yep. I'm yeah. comfortable with hey, whatever you show your kids. I'm there for it. There you go. Well, it's pretty real looking story. It uh, is. Uh, I'm so happy for you, Pat. And thank you for having Thanks me. Thanks for talking to me about your book and stuff. If anybody hadn't read your book, it's called Rabbit, the Autobi- Autobiography of Miss Pat. Yes. And your show on BET Plus comes out August 12th, mm-hmm. The Miss Pat Show. The Miss Pat Show. What else do you have to talk about? Your podcast? Uh, my podcast is called The Pat Down. That's awesome, too. I yeah. love it. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. And I got some other stuff that's brewing, but... We'll talk about it off camera. Some other time. Yeah. Some other time. All right. Well, thank you guys. <laughs> thank you, Pat. Bye. What was it when they come in and evaluate how much your home appraisal. costs? They, they, home appraisal they, is racist inherently. Oh, yeah. That's why you get white people. You take your black pictures down. They just had a big thing in Indiana where a lady house came up on the uh, almost $2,000. I mean, I'm sorry, almost $20,000 cheaper. 
And what happened was uh, she took her pictures down and got her white friends no. to do it. And it went, it, it fucking raised at the roof. You're yeah. kidding. Yeah. So Home that, appraisal inherently is racist in, by design. It's basically, uh, it's so funny is that. What it's called is the. Keep the niggas out your neighborhood. <laughs> Let's just keep it real. Not, I mean, we're friends. Cool. Yeah. I know you're not racist. I, this your podcast, but I can say that. <laughs> just keep your niggas out. You, you want to give them less. You don't want them to move into your neighborhood. So what you do, you outprice them. And then you when they, when you go to appraise their house, you make it lower so they don't get enough move, money to move to the next nice neighborhood. It's insane to me that that is something that is basically just greenlit in society. Is that you would look at a house and a land. And based on the skin color of the inhabitants of that neighborhood, you would go, oh, yeah, that's not. And that's, you, that's crazy. But you know what else? You can walk. Can you check on my family, baby? Because they ain't that hot ass car. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You producer. Fuck no, that shit. Hang on. Where's I'll, I'll go check. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I got a text message. Where you going? I'm going to no, I got a fucking text message. You know, Andrew should have. Gotten them right. I know, yeah, I don't know if he's. Let me call. Him. Let's tell him walk straight back. Ain't no dogs, yeah. is it? No, no. No black folks scared of dogs. Well, we have dogs, but they're in the gated off the backyard. Yeah, I'm scared. Way. I don't fuck with no dogs. Hold up. Come on, answer the fucking phone. Answer the fucking phone. Maybe they went to Starbucks with Andrew. No, they got that. They were the driver. Oh. Dumb bitch. I don't know who. Do, I hate. I hate young people. All they want to do is. Fucking text. I remember. I remember. Oh, hey, I got to. I got to take. Are y'all coming in? Today. Yeah, we were talking about. Bye. I got time. Fuck so, um, <laughs> it's it's interesting to me is that something like that is something that I would assume just throughout my life. What are you talking about? What like like that's where I'd go. Like you go, yeah, that's racist. I go, come on, what are you yeah. what are you talking about? And then you start realizing, I don't know why. I don't know what it was. Might have been that article about that woman in Indiana, mm-hmm. but and then you start going, "Wow, if that if I just saw that, wonder what other shit I kind of been letting slide by that I that I've not that you not come on in, just have a seat anywhere." I mean, it's a, you you would be surprised. Like when you go, you can't come over here. You you uh, have a seat. We have a room over there as well, and then there's an outdoor seating area. It's a little hot though. But our dogs are. But out yeah, there. but there's another full Just, room in there if you want to grab a seat or grab a seat at the bar. There's a couch um, and chair in the other room. Y'all are welcome to all this. Whatever but um, uh, like when you're selling a house and you're a black person, you you know to get more value out of your house to take your fucking family photos down. Like yeah. I live in an all white neighborhood, and my house in my neighborhood. The houses go real fucking quick. But everybody know I'm about the only black person with the ranch there. So I'm going to wipe that bitch up. Yeah. <laughs> I might have to get you to come over there and say, hey, this is your house. <laughs> so do I get some, you. Do some real white shit out in the front yard. <laughs> yeah, just take your shirt off, Bert. That's what my next door neighbor do. <laughs> play some cornhole with the kids. Yeah, play some cornhole. Because black folks don't play cornhole. We play horseshoes. <laughs> I, love, I love horseshoes. <laughs> but, I mean, that's what they do. Everybody know that when you sell in the house, you, got, you have to. Also, the colors that you put on the wall represent the race. Black folks like color. Mm. They like, they'll, they'll, they'll fucking orange a room up in a minute. <laughs> burnt orange. I got a girlfriend. Everything this bitch do is burnt orange. I'm like, what the fuck is burnt orange? <laughs> <laughs> that bitch always decorating in burnt orange. And she been doing this for about 20 something years. She love burnt orange. Her leather, her fake leather couch is burnt orange and brown. <laughs> and, and, and beige. Them her three colors. She put her whole house is burnt orange, beige, and, and brown. I like those colors. Those are great colors. Yeah, but 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. No I'm longer. like, bitch, if you don't update this house, but them, them her fucking colors. I remember I remember uh, being with Patrice O'Neill, and he was making fun of me because my shoes and my shirt weren't matching. Like, yeah. That I was, that I would, that I, I would just put together an outfit willy-nilly, and he would be like, the f-, like, my hat, my <laughs> shoes, and like, he's like, those are, None of those go together. No. And I was like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And now that I'm into shoes more and, mm-hmm. and definitely into hats, I I, I do you feel know awkward. I you feel, know better. Yeah. Yeah. Like you it's, know better. Find it fucking so fascinating. And white boys are the king of dirty ass shoes. And if you, oh, oh, y'all. oh, oh, don't <laughs> hang on one second. Can I tell you what's crazy? By the way, I, I hope this doesn't offend anyone in Serbia. In Ser- when we went to Serbia, no one had clean shoes. 
no one had clean shoes. I think that I think that nice clean. You get a pair of good shoes and you wear them. And uh, I, and by the way, this is my assessment based on not talking to anyone, but going through wardrobes. So they get me a pair of like uh, Stan Smiths, and then they dirty them up. And I go, whoa, 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 whoa. Like I don't I don't wear dirty shoes. And they'd be like. Yeah, but, you, but they're your shoes. They'd be dirty, right? And I was like, no. I wanted to be like, no. I'm a fucking millionaire. You think I'm wearing dirty fucking shoes? <laughs> like, you're, you're out of your fucking mind. Like, I'm throwing those away for $35. I'm buying another pair of Stan Smiths. But they, and they would get them dirty as fuck. And I, our director was like, what is wrong with the shoes? And I, we thought it was it, it was cultural. And I, growing up, I remember, the, you know, you'd get a new pair of shoes and your friends would all step on them. And and that was not something black dudes did. Oh, you pat, get your pat, ass beat. Pat. I remember, do you want to hear something even crazier? So I go to play basketball for the first time in LA. I don't have basketball shoes. So I go to Bever- the Beverly Center and I go to buy a pair of Jordans to play basketball in. Oh, shit. You probably bought the, the wrong Jordans. <laughs> I buy I buy a brand new, the brand new pair of Jordans and I walk out and Kevin Hart sees me and he comes over and he grabs a bag like he was like joking, like, give me those Jordans. And he goes, what did you get? What are you getting Jordans for? We you get Jordans. And I go, oh, I'm playing basketball today. And he goes, hey, man, you don't play basketball in Jordans. I'm oh, like, no. What? And he goes, you don't. Please tell me you're not playing basketball in those shoes. I go, yeah, I'm gonna, that's why they're basketball shoes. And he goes, no, 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 no. <laughs> those aren't basketball shoes. I go, Kevin, they're the greatest basketball players in the world's shoes. I'm going to wear them to play basketball. And he goes, Bert, please, please, please don't buy. But go in and get yourself a pair of shoes that you can beat up and play basketball. And I go, Kevin, it's fine. I showed up at the court and everyone mocked me. They're like, Oh my God, I want to beat you up and steal your shoes just so you don't play basketball in them. Because you can't get that crease in them. You can't, it's all of a sudden you're fucking up a brand new pair of nice shoes that you would wear out. Yes. That was something I learned as well. And you probably bought the one of the pair, the collector collector pair. And you probably I'm yeah. surprised they didn't take them from you because you didn't know what the fuck you're doing. Like my <laughs> friend, he collect Jordans. Yeah. He only buy like what Jordan played in. And if they get he would not let them get a crease in them. You know, like if you bend your yeah. feet. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think he walked like a fucking flat foot. He walked like a, a, a fool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, uh. And yeah. he just and if you notice, like <laughs> I remember back in the day, black people would take a, a rag a washcloth and they would walk around with it and they just wipe their shoes off all day. That's what the drug dealers used to do. Just wipe their <laughs> shoes off. You be at the club. Don't you step on my fucking shoes. I mean, uh, stepping on your shoes could start a damn fight. Oh, oh yeah. Can I, t- what I watched T.I. You're friends with T.I., right? I love me some T.I. <laughs> I watch. it's so fun to watch. I, by the way, I'm not comfortable talking about racial stuff with other black people in the room. Oh, they're black. Crazy? They, they, no, no, but like, like I'm just being honest. Like, I can talk to you about anything. That's my this, fucking daughter. And she, I know, but but I start going women? like, I start she going eat white women. Just one time. <laughs> <laughs> Watching Ti and Tiny go through Europe has been such an enjoyable because you can't take. Atlanta out of those two human Mm-mm. beings. You and cannot. and when you watch them interact with people in Venice, like he they gave him a very nice uh a very nice rose. And TI is like, you ain't got no ace of spades in here. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I, I'm I, I know and he goes, Rick Ross got a rose. And I'm just thinking, I don't by the way, I don't know how good Rick Ross's rose is, but it's such a marketing thing that that T.I. believes that Rick Ross would have the best rosé. You're in fucking Venice, Italy. <laughs> you're going to get, on. by the way, on a private yacht, you're going to get really good rosé. And I watched him sip it, and he did not like it. He was like, Ugh. It, I don't, don't post just, this. This ain't coming out to the show. Okay. Okay. Um, But but I enjoyed, I ended up drinking rosé like T.I. He just had a disdain for it. <laughs> and But to watch him and Tiny go through... I saw them. They was beautiful. It was their anniversary. Is that what it was? Yeah, they were celebrating their, I don't know how many years it was, but they celebrating their anniversary. And I watched several clips. I, I watched them. 12. They were in Amsterdam. They uh-huh. were in Venice. There was That's the other thing that's crazy is like, I'm fascinated by like watching someone like Big Boy from Outkast, T.I. I think it's South. I don't really care much about, but like the Southern hip hop guys that I grew up listening to, to watch them experience things globally is yeah. fascinating to me. Yeah. You know, like there's certain things that I feel like Southern wise, like to watch Big Boy make lobsters 
Like it's it's he takes such a, a, a clean food and makes it so unhealthy. He covers it in so much goddamn butter. butter. Yeah, it's just like yeah. more butter and more butter, <laughs> more butter and more butter, and that should be delicious. Oh. And you and then you get uh uh what is it Nicaragua when you get real full? What is it called? Oh, itis. You get itis. You know what itis is? No. When a black person get real, real full and they ready to go to sleep. Oh. So time you finish eating, you ready to go to sleep. You get itis. <laughs> Boy, that damn butter get on you oh. and you be feeling heavy and your heart get to beating fast. You got to lay down. Oh. You're sweating. <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, I get, there's a weird thing about growing up in the South that I think Leanne probably has too. Leanne's trainer, her fam- his family grew up like a, a county over in from- Cedar Town. You know where Cedar Town is? Cedar it's town. south of Rome, north of Carrollton. I don't know. Oh, yeah, know. I heard of it. Yeah, I Cedar know where town. Carrollton is. So my, my trainer is a, a black man, and his both parents are from Cedartown. He grew up in New Orleans, but he used to spend all summer. And Cedartown was like 30 minutes from where I grew up. So he's I, we have a like shorthand and a way of talking to each other that nobody else understands in his whole group because nobody's from that part of the country. Wow. So he can coach yeah. me like that. He can tell me what to do, and I'm like, got it. And he'll be yelling at my friend, no, that's not what I said. And she's like, he's yelling at me. I go, he's actually not yelling. He's just talking to you yeah. really passionately. Uh, and she'll constantly say, he just yells at me all the time. And I'm like, it's, I swear to you, he's not yelling at you. If he was yelling at you, it'd be terrifying. People yeah. think I'd be yelling, too. And I'm like, oh, no. You know, I said, I'm fucking talk. talking. Yeah. And I'm excited. I'm excited about this situation. And you'll know when I'm yelling, because, oh, God, everything comes loose. You be all kind of motherfuckers and some bitches. If I'm talking and I'm calming and I'm not cussing your ass out, yeah. I'm not yelling. But time you get up, you know, I'm big and I'm black. Time I stand up and my voice care. You're yelling. I'm not fucking yelling. Yeah. Didn't know, That's what very was, southern. So what was that yeah, like? What's that southern. like when you go into? You just did your your show. Mm-hmm. It's so good, the Miss Pat show. On yeah. Thank you. It was you. It's That's so why good. it's good. It's because it's you. Yes. Yes. No one fucked it up. No one fucked it up. And you know what? I you know it's five years in the making. I know. I, I feel like I feel like. <laughs> can I tell you? I, there's. I give up on shit really quick. Like I give up very quickly on stuff. You, f- you fucking willed this show into existence. Yes. Me, Lee Daniels, Brian Grazer. I mean, and it, you know, I went through three writers. And the hardest part is when you're new to this shit mm-hmm. and you really want it to happen. So you you've been led by people, which is the writer, and you're like, well, I'm I'm. My biggest thing was, am I gonna let this motherfucker do this to me, or am I gonna speak up? But mm. when, the that's the it. Well, thing, hang on. That's a, now that let's stop there because. That is an interesting, uh, that's an interesting dance in this business Mm -hmm. because I I will say, and I have said, and I've said this to Leanne, let them do everything they want to do to you to get it, to get made. I've always believed in that. Let, get me the money to get on location with the trucks, the cameras and the people. And then I'm going to do what I do. And I don't mean this disrespectfully, but I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that it's mine. I don't, I, I want, I want everyone to be happy getting up in the thing. And then when you guys are all happy with what you get. The second those camera goes on, that's then it's mine, and I'm making it mine. I did that. I've done. I've done that's how I operate mm-hmm. because I I know how hard it is to get things made, and I've watched projects get shut down when you start putting your foot down and going, "No, this is what I want." Now you took the opposite route, and I think you had to. I think, I think that I'm surrounded by so many white men that they're going to do white men right in that situation, mm-hmm. and if you don't do that, you get shoehorned into this fucking bullshit of what they think you are yeah correct well the good part about it like it was based off my life yeah. and to me when you wasn't doing my life when you wasn't doing my life then i was like hey that's not me i won't say that so yeah. the hardest part with dealing with the writers uh the two before we got the one the right one is they wouldn't listen you know you out here in hollywood Everything is in a certain done in a certain way, tied in the same fucking bowl. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not what we're gonna do. That's not me. I'm not. I'm not Claire Huxable. I don't fucking chop vegetables. Okay. <laughs> I don't speak the correct English. Uh, I'm a convicted felon. I'm on TV. I want to give you something different and a little bit realer, which is my fucking life, but funnier. I was very. You know, you run into when they give you these writers, they have what they have in their head. One thing I learned about writers and comedians, 
writers will fight over what they think is funny versus what you think is funny. And that's one of the biggest problems I had with someone. Motherfucker, you can't out funny me. Right. And when we talking about me, mm-hmm. I know what me would say. And I, you know, I, I, it was hard. It was scary. You know, you think about the money. But then at the end of the day, I said, well, shit, I can go steal it. What Fox paid me. I'd rather <laughs> get rid of this writer. I can go steal this shit. Yeah, or I'd rather yeah. not have a show because I don't want to be out there, you know, with, with with some bullshit. If I if this show only go one season, one thing you can't say is that it ain't motherfucking good and it ain't funny. It'll be because people didn't bring their ass over to BET Plus and watch it. Yeah. It's a good show. Can I tell you, I get, I get, <clears throat> I it get is a ter- good show. I can't wait to yeah. talk about your. I, I watched your first episode, so I can't wait to talk about that. I get territorial for BET because it, it's it, plus, it, but but BET in general because with so much with so much diversity happening in all of mainstream media, I look at a place that's been the lighthouse in the fog for what you would Black arguably call the, the culture is yeah. you know hip hop and yeah, and then you go, <clears throat> I wonder if BET's just sitting there like, yeah, we've been diverse our whole fucking career. <laughs> like, yeah, we've been making, we've been, we've been having black directors for a long fucking time. Right? Where the fuck has Hollywood been? That's uh, our whole model, right? Uh, yeah. So what's BET Plus? BET Plus. It's like Netflix. They have a streaming service. Yeah. So it's only eighteen months old. It's new. What was crazy is once I shot the. Pilot, I would have loved. I would have loved to have been in the room <laughs> when they came up with the idea of D- BET Plus. A bunch of black people in the room going. Should we start a streaming service? And you're like, I don't know. I kind of use my cousin's login. Like they're all just sitting around going, I'm not certain we have the right demographic to start a streaming service. <laughs> well, they they they're working on a lot of other origin. I think yeah. that Tyler Perry is also a part of BT Plus, yeah, and which is a part of Viacom and, and Paramount. So yeah. overall, the umbrella is fucking huge. Oh, so you if you once you subscribe for that thing, then BT Plus is in that. Is umbrella, is the umbrella, under the Paramount. umbrella. Yeah. Probably yeah. part of Paramount, right? Well, oh, yeah. well, I think BET right now is a standalone. BET is a part of Paramount, but BET Plus standalone. Oh, but it's all Viacom in one. Mm-hmm. But um, the fuck was I about to say? When we was, uh, what was crazy is when, you know, Hulu shot the pilot. Hulu originally got the show from Fox and bought and shot the pilot. And what was weird about Hulu was, well, what was great about Hulu is that they did a great fucking job of helping us put the pilot together, which you just watched. Yeah. They notes was great. They was understanding. The people who bought the show really fucking got it. But you always got some execs who don't get it. Somebody yeah. don't get what being black in America is. Because if you've seen in the show, when I shoved the sun, that person... Uh, Thought I was being mean. No, motherfucker, I'm being a mama. Uh, you ain't shoving your son, that motherfucker down there in the basement making a bomb and becoming a school shooter because <laughs> you let him do what the fuck you want to do. Yeah. You ain't talking to this fucking kid. So I remember when we were shooting the pilot, it was so much excitement. Everybody there, and I'm trying to pull everybody to the side and say, uh, they're not going to pick this up. I just felt it in my bones. Mm. Yeah. And it's like, what are you talking about? I said, they're not going to pick this shit up. And I was like, why? I said, because they don't get it. And it was like, you don't know what you're talking about. Six months later, they dropped it. I would never forget it was Valentine's Day. I was in Raleigh, North Carolina, doing a show at a new improv, and Lee Daniel called me and with damn near cracker in his voice, and he said they dropped it. And he said, But I promise you I'll find a home for it. And not I did not feel like he was not gonna find a home. I said, Well, I said, I got a soul out show. I gotta go out here and perform. <clears throat> I didn't care. But I knew I, I I picked up on spirits and I knew that somebody would would pick it up. Mm-hmm. A couple weeks later, they said BT Plus picked it up out of 10. I said, what the fuck is BT Plus? <laughs> Not even I knew what BT Plus <laughs> was. And they said they got a streaming service. I said, they do. But, I, you know, I was a little hurt. You know, go from Hulu, then you go to BT Plus. But then I had to say, hey, I'm going to fuck with who wants to fuck with me. Plus, this is a new screaming platform. Hopefully, I am their handmaid's tale to like Hulu was, was like, like handmaid's tales to Hulu. You need something to, You need something to bring people to the to the platform. And I think this show will. It's, it's so good. Let me tell you what I like about this show. I like a lot. I watched the, I watched the pilot last night. It reminds me of Roseanne. Okay. But it reminds me also of some, well, it, I, I kept saying, I've never seen anything like this before. And you know, I've read your book twice. Mm-hmm. And so I really feel like I know your history as much as you've revealed it in your book. And I was like, this is so authentically Pat. And what we liked about shows like Roseanne was that that was pretty authentically Roseanne. Mm-hmm. And so many people are exactly like you. 
not exactly, but exactly. Like yeah. they shove their son when they're trying to make a point. Yeah. You know, and they curse at their, I curse at my kids. Yeah. But we don't talk about that. No. We don't show that publicly. No. And I thought that's brilliant because for me, I watch something that I'm familiar with and completely unfamiliar with at the same time. You know, like we were talking about earlier with my trainer, him yelling is not yelling to me. So your yelling in that pilot was not really yelling to me. I thought it was awesome. Thank I you. I like the acting. I like the casting. I liked your kids. I liked the stories that you dealt with each kid. I liked your husband. I liked your relationship with your husband. You were amazing. And I know you're playing yourself, but you were funny and fun and relaxed. And I enjoyed every single minute. And you know, what I do when I, when I help Bert, is I wait to see when I stop paying attention. So that's when I say to him, hey, there's something going on here. I'm not paying attention. There was not one single minute where I stopped paying attention. Wow. And I was like, this is a good show. I never, ever dropped out of it. Like, I never got distracted. I couldn't wait to see what happened next. And I also thought that it's refreshing. I feel like we've been so freaking PC Mm -hmm. for so long that it was refreshing to have some a shit in there. Fa- the cursing. Mo- you said motherfucker one time, and I was like, yes, <laughs> thank you. I say motherfucker. That's our safe word. I loved it. I really genuinely loved it. And I'm not just saying that because you're my friend yeah. and we know each other. I really we did. Really, I will watch it every time it comes on. Thank I will. You. We really wanted it to feel real. We wanted to come in. We want, we had conversations that real people have. Like, honestly, you know, like the, uh, the pilot is about school shootings. You know, when mm-hmm. on the plane, when, when I'm sitting on the plane with the white lady and she was talking about when I was like, well, hell, I can't remember where for real what it was, but it was it was a whole conversation was about school shooting, which I I got that idea because I used to fly Southwest and I would block the seats off, you know, Southwest, you say what the fuck you want, but right. I would always block it off for a white person because I wanted to have an uncomfortable, uncomfortable conversation about race. Mm-hmm. And it's usually would be white men. And, and 90% of the time I could get them participate. Oh yeah. But they would get red and fluctuate and uncomfortable. <laughs> and, but I'm, I'm like, Hey, I'm, I'm here to listen to you. I want to know why you feel the way you feel. And we talk about race. And I think that's what's wrong with the country. We don't have these uncomfortable conversations. I that's why we had agree. it. That's why we had, that conversation on the plane about the lady was like do you really think the police would have shot him and I was like uh, do you realize these people can get fucking four million dollars every time they shoot your child and then the other lady said what the fuck she said behind me oh and then they tax and then the they shit. tax half but you yeah. only keep half it something like that yeah. yeah which is funny I wanted to touch on we wanted to touch on real shit I mean we talked about uh, in one episode we, a derogatory episode it's a word in there that's going to Oh, you just wait till you get to that episode. Uh, the word chink is in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. But it's, it's, I mean, we talked about him, them, and they and there. That's the new shit that. Pronouns. Pe- pronouns, what they call themselves. That, that that was really true to me. My daughter, Gariana, had a kid over and I was like, why you got this boy? And he was like, I'm, I'm them, there, and there. I, well, I don't give a fuck who you is. Get your ass up out of here. You got a dick. You know? <laughs> right. But see, I think those conversations are so healthy because yes. no one will have them. It on sucks. On TV, they won't. And you know, no, on TV, they won't. I, they TV, totally they won't, won't but I've, they need yeah. to because uh, how do you get past anything if you don't talk about it or at least be curious about something and try to learn yeah you can't learn anything i mean if you don't sit down a box. And you just can't say i got a black friend right you got a black <laughs> friend and you and i love when you ask me stuff about race i love because i know i know you're hard yeah. i know you're not fucking racist i know you really care about me i remember when the pandemic hit you called me and said are you good <laughs> you joe rogan uh, a couple other people and I'm like uh, I have a savings but thank you rich motherfuckers <laughs> but I remember you checking in on me and yeah. to me that meant a lot to me mm-hmm. because I'm not I'm not I'm not where you at but you know and I really needed the road work but thank God when the pandemic hit I was fucking writing my episode from a TV show so yeah. I was getting paid so you know when they when y'all checked in on me just you checking in on me meant a lot to me. It it it, it told me where your heart really was as a friendship. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know. Well, I think I, I think I mean. I, I I I try not to like. I have a weird thing about it now because it got it gets so volatile 
the, I, my favorite thing in the world are uncomfortable conversations about race. My favorite thing in the world, in the world. I love, I, freshman year at Florida State, it was the, I, they, they had segregated the dorm floors. There was one for black chicks. There was one for black dudes. There was one for white dudes. And this is, I mean, I know that that sounds crazy to hear right now that people would go, there's no way a college did it. it did it. By the way, Tallahassee is a segregated city. It's completely. You have FAMU. You have te- Florida State. I mean, the, just in general, we went down, me and this guy, Jeff Hartley, went down to the, uh, we we're going dorm, to, dorm floor to dorm floor meeting chicks. And we get to the black floor. It was the second floor. And we met these girls and we had so much fun with them, but it was just busting balls and, and talking about like just every, we ended up hanging out in their dorm room. We had beers was when we were drinking and it was one of my favorite conversations I've ever had, but it, because I didn't know anything growing up about any diversity, about anything. The fact that they thought we smelled different was, oh, yeah. was, oh, day. Uh, we. Uh, <laughs> y'all. it was, it was, but, but I love those. And now you get to a place where you go, <laughs> y'all do you go, smell different. Is, I, you, apparently we smell like wet dogs. And so, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what black person sat around and thought that white people smell like white dogs. <laughs> the, 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 uh, did you see what just happened to Matt Damon? Matt yeah. Damon, Matt Damon he said, said he used to say the F word. But yeah, but, but like last week, apparently, like he was saying like, yeah, I, I stopped saying it because I said it at the dinner table my in a joke. And my daughter wrote this like letter to me and said, Dad, you got to stop saying it. And that's what and, my episode is about. And, 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 Matt, and Matt Damon was like, and then all of a sudden, Matt Damon is trying to be a good guy, right? And say a good thing. I don't say that word. But then this honest conversation is twisted by the media and, the, and people hear what he just said. He doesn't know what he said because he's been famous for too long. People go, so wait, you were saying the F word like up to a month ago? And he was like, huh, what? And they're yeah. like, wait, yeah, yeah. And then in my they, house. Yeah, in your house to your daughter? What, you called your daughter the F word? Yeah. Like, and, and then Matt Damon's like, no. And then he had to backpedal and have a lawyer write a statement saying, it is a word I heard growing up. I never used it in my personal life. Now he's backtracking to the point where it's well, like. who gives a fuck but if no, he but says my point fuck. Is, my point is. There are so many snipers out there, and you I know you've seen those trolls oh, yeah. that wait for you to slip up, wait for you to say something that's off key. I remember I remember talking to Snoop, and Snoop said, I said something, and he goes, I go, I can't wait to get drunk and high and sing your songs back to you. And he said, he said something. He goes, Do you when you listen to my music, do you sing the N-word? And I was like, fuck yeah. I was like, you think I don't? And I remember Snoop being like, You you sing the N-word? And I was like, Snoop. You put it in the song like what it's not. And but a simple conversation like that where you would have that with Snoop. I had the same conversation with Trinidad James. And he was like, you you sing it. And I was like, at your house, I, I'm not going to sing it to his face. But like when I'm by myself in my car, are you being fucked? I'm going to all gold everything you think I'm going to. What do you think? I'm going to not sing 39 percent of that song. 39 percent. <laughs> 39% of that song is just Fuck the N word. I yes. don't sing it with my kids in the car, but if my windows are up and the yes. aircon's on, yes. and my mouth Your is covered tinted. by tinted windows, yes. and there's no. I remember the day I started rolling my windows up to sing the word. I remember I was in college and I was at the corner and there was a, just a white dude on the corner. And I was like, wait, I was listening to uh, 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 South Circle. It, was, it used to be this, this, uh, this, it was this Suave House was this collective of artists out of like Tennessee or, or Houston and uh and I was, South Circle was like my favorite by the way I used to think there's two dudes in, in South Circle it was like Thoreau and Mr. Mike and Mr. Mike do you ever have you ever heard of okay yeah and so I she thought can I tell you thing. when when I thought when I thought Mr. Mike was uh was um uh who's in who's in run the jewels uh Killer Mike. I thought I thought when Killer Mike came out, I thought it was Mr. Mike. And I've been I was like, I've been waiting for him forever. And then I was like, God, he got good. And this is very different. But it's but like but but, but you go on 85 South and say and say they say, Do you sing the M word when you say it? And you go, Yeah. And then all of a sudden that is snipered and the peril of that conversation isn't worth it. So you learn this when you go do some place like 85 South. What my coffee at? You would you let me have it, baby. Thank you. Can you pass my coffee, please? You would say shit like, "Do you say the N word when you uh when you say in the rap song? You say none of your motherfucking business. 
That between me, Jesus, and the radio in the car. <laughs> That's right. Excellent answer. But That's what you say. Yeah. Because they're, they're looking for anything racist. I mean, look what they're doing to the baby. I mean, the, the, I don't know what to the talk fuck. to you. Because I don't cause know. You, know. you know what it is? Are you ready? Oh, man. See, this is one of those things I probably shouldn't say. <laughs> you I probably it. shouldn't say. <laughs> but the truth is. I don't know who he thought was sucking dick in the parking lot. That was so 1990. Yeah, wait, what, what did the baby say? He I said, don't even know what the fuck the baby said. He said something. He said, you ain't have AIDS or HIV. Then wave your So I guess he just got happy. Somebody said, I think it was, I think it was a, uh, I think it was uh, what's this guy, uh, Chris Brown who said, "Do your songs and get the fuck off stage. Don't ab lib, nigga. It's gonna get you in trouble. Don't ab lib. Shut your fucking mouth." Right? What you, a fucking weird thing to say. If yeah, who is getting if a you dick? You don't have AIDS. Put your phone in the air. <laughs> it's like such an odd look. Like, but the fucked up part AIDS. is AIDS is almost cured. So what the <laughs> fuck? People suck AIDS yeah, dicks these AIDS days. AIDS is a death the baby. It's no, it's Wait, it. the baby's different yeah. than Lil Baby, right? Oh, don't add okay, me back. The baby's the one that had the great music video. The funny one. He, the baby is is he a comedian too? Your flashlight yeah, your lights on. on phone. Oh, I don't know no, who. The I, baby I, it's has, too many babies and it's too many littles, so I don't keep up with the motherfuckers. Yeah. Only one I like, my favorite rapper right now that's new is that goddamn Lil Nas. Oh my fucking god! I was yeah. at the BET Awards. I was at the BET Awards. Y'all got to be quiet. We can hear y'all. I was at the BET Awards and motherfucking Lil Nas walked by with a dress on. And I said, Lil Nas, how you going to shut down the real bitches? You making the real bitches look bad. <laughs> he love, was gorgeous. I love when Lil Nas, Lil, so Leanne, I'm, I'm only because you're not into you know, I know music. I Lil Nas is. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. But and Lil, I saw him in the dress. No, it was awesome. Lil Nas did, uh, Lil Nas came out as gay and everyone was like, yep. cool, right? And I think some people, some people, it showed their homophobia a little bit, the way they were behaved. To they always say, they always say, you're trying to push gayness on me because he yeah. kissing a man. Well, I look at it like this, because I mean, I used to feel the same way until like, my daughter started eating pussy and then my eyes came open to, hey, that's just what they eat. I, you know, I enjoy sucking dick back in the day before vertigo kicked in at a certain age in my life. <laughs> so, you know, I can't knock nobody for what the fuck they do. So, if, I mean, if you if you get uncomfortable by people showing love, then maybe you're really interested in what the fuck they're doing and right. you're fighting against that inner self because I was at the BET Awards when Lil Nas kissed the man and I was like, oh, Lil Nas, we on TV. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> he, he caught me off guard with the kiss, but it was beautiful. But, you know, my 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 daughter is gay and then my uh, the creator of my show is gay and they was in the back, do that shit, Lil Nas. I said, do the shit, Lil Nas. Well, goddamn, I forgot we was on TV. <laughs> I was fist pumping for Lil Nas. Because everyone, he came out as gay and everyone was like, you could hear everyone go, yeah, 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 we're cool with it. But, but why does that even matter? Why does that even matter? Right. Exactly. Like, that's how they were behaving. And you were like, okay, I think you're not really cool with it. I think you're just saying what you're supposed to say. And then Lil Nas was like, uh, not only am I gay, I'm going to eat the devil's asshole. On, <laughs> I and, saw it. And that video, I started fist pumping going, no, no, that's him putting a, a flag in the ground going, I am very gay. <laughs> All this shit you think I do, I definitely do. And I was like, I was, I loved it. I, I love that. I'm a little I love, I love the agitator. Like I love the agitator and it's, you know, it's, it, it, I don't know why never, you would love an agitator because you're definitely not an agitator. No, but it's, it's he like, clapped back too. He clapped back on their ass. Yeah. He be, he said, "Oh, you just want to eat my dick." Pretty much, that's what he yeah. be on that saying. And the baby said, "If you don't have HIV, put your hand. If you are one of those dudes, this is what I love about the baby. It was a little too specific. If you're not one of those dudes, it's out in the parking lot over by that Civic, the sucking dicks. You know the one over by the. If it was just, all right, never mind. Uh, someone told me about that. By the way, I really liked the baby. I loved like his." He has that music. Is his one of the music video With where the they're band. all dancing in the street and the white girls twerking upside down? Is, look, the baby's really fucking good. Yeah, and that's the thing about forgiveness. Just lost if the it. artist is good, I need to forgive them. I mean, you know, people make mistakes, and you know, he's young, he got money, and I mean, I think this kid. I think the baby said, "If I'm not quote me, if I'm not wrong, he been molested." Is he the one that said that? 
He been through some that's issues. Super open. That's yeah. such a pivot from the two personalities of well, like. Well, you know, yeah. you, sometimes you know when you're in that moment and you done made it. And I don't know if you've been molested. I'm just there's so many of them, so many stories I hear about different one of them. I hope I ain't mixing it up. Correct me if I'm wrong. But you know, he was in the moment and he said the wrong shit. I think people like Leanne lost her virginity very young. Yes, right? Yes, and, so and, they and, do down and, south. They so, fuck yeah. you and make you learn how to cook. They That's, fuck you and make you learn how to cook. Right. Yeah. They ain't nothing else to do. But the baby lost his fast. virginity when he was five? Yeah. I can that's, tell that's, you. That is fucking. So let me tell you a story. I used to be a medical system, right? Nobody really fucking knows. But when I thought I wanted to go in the nurse and figure out they weren't going to have no convicted felon for selling cocaine uh, for crack. So before I went into comedy, I used to be a medical system. And I worked at this doctor's office. And I won't say who it was. But I had this relative uh, bring their child in who knew I worked at the office. And the child was six years old with gonorrhea. Oh, my God. The child was six years old with gonorrhea. The babysitter had fucked him. Oh, the babysitter my God. had fucked him. Yes. See that? And that's a weird thing because I think so many men hear that and they're like, you know, a uh, teacher have sex with a 13 year old and everyone's like i wish my teacher was like that and you're like no no no, no you're no. that you're stealing a part of that you're stealing that you're, person's childhood that's right because that's what happened to me i mean i had her at 14 you yeah. know so i mean i thought it was my boyfriend it wasn't but he, my mama boyfriend also molested me so you know yeah it's it's interesting to go for because i remember losing my virginity and being like Oh, I, w- I was 17 and I was like, I wasn't ready. I- I'm not ready. Well, I wish losing I- your virginity and having your virginity taken is a totally, totally different thing. Totally different thing. You I was, lost you my helped virginity. Put your I dick was in that totally pussy. involved in it. But yeah. when you're eight, you, that's something that's just Somebody stolen. just said, land it's down, terrible. let me set this hot puss on you. And then you wake up and you look, the, the baby dick is sticking to his drawers. Mm. That ain't participation. No. no. That's, that's one-sided. Evil. That's, that's fucking evil. That's fucking crazy. It's damaging mm-hmm. and it's evil. That's that's insane. That's not. I mean, that's just not. You look at like a child, when, especially when you have children. Mm-hmm. You know, I think once again, it's one of those things when you read it on paper, you're like, "Oh, that's horrible." But then when you look at a five year old, you're like, "Oh, that's fucking criminal." You know, since I was molested, I never let my kids out of my sight. I never. I don't know if I told you this story, but I I was just paranoid. I knew what the fuck I went through. You was not. You were not gonna fuck with my children. I remember when she went to college. And she said, all her, they was having a conversation. She was like, all my friends been molested. She was like, I was the only person that didn't have a molestation story. And I felt so bad. And I, she called home and told me that. And I was like, I did my fucking job. You did. Yeah. You know, yeah, you it can, was if you something. you get your kids not molested, that's a pretty big home run as a parent. Yeah. I just wrote a, a molestation bit. I, I don't want to tell it on here, but it is fucking hilarious. That's great. Yeah. Because so my, many people can relate to it. Yes. Because my yeah. mama boyfriend molested me and he did the most creepiest shit at the <laughs> end. And I'm not going to give my bit away, but it's going to be on my next hour. And I've been like throwing it out now on the road when I'm on the road. And people like this bitch is crazy. But because I want people to laugh, be able to laugh at everything. The mm-hmm. darkest shit in your life. And I say this every night on stage. I said, I don't give a fuck if somebody stuck their thumb up your ass when you was a kid find a way to laugh at it maybe they didn't go past the knuckle yeah. and they cheated themselves, <laughs> they cheated themselves. <laughs> the funniest molestation bit I won't say the person's name because I, I have said it I don't know if this person wants me to share it they shared it to, to me on a podcast so they know that it's been said but there were every, a bunch a bunch of comics were talking about getting molested and then the guy didn't tell his story and he was in therapy at the time and he goes to therapy the next day and he says, uh, by the way, edit this guy's name out. Okay. Okay. So uh, this guy goes uh, to therapy the next day and he's like talking to his therapist. And he's like, so what's going on? How's comedy? He's like, oh, good, man. Everyone was telling their molested stories last night. And I just never got around to mine. And he's like, you're molested? He's like, nah, not really. But like, you know, you know, weird shit happens when you're a kid. And he goes, well, why don't you tell me the story? He goes, it's not that good of a story. Like, I'm going to tell it to you and you're going to go, you didn't get molested. And he goes, well, why don't you just tell me the story? So he starts telling his story and his therapist's mouth is just open like this like huh? and he goes what you're making it sound like it's bad and the therapist looks at him and he goes would you ever do that to a child and he goes oh my god no and he goes you were molested <laughs> he goes oh my god I was molested I was fucking molested it was such a good story where, like I, I couldn't stop laughing and you think about those things like I, I had 
instances growing up where you go, no, I wasn't molested, but they definitely, you know, held me down on a on a chopping block or cut it or like a butcher's block in a kitchen and put ice cubes up my asshole. And they're like, that's that you're being pretty molested. aggressive. And that's you're like, pretty fucking you know, invasive. It's, it's funny. It, it also changes the way you behave. Like I always was the guy that at a party to get naked first, you know? That's why you're still naked. And, and you want to be molested. It's, it's because <laughs> it's because he's writing the that wrong. shit would have. That was how boys behaved. When mm-hmm. I was like ten years old, that's how boys behaved. Mm-hmm. You know, you you'd uh, wake up and then they put their balls on your forehead, and you're like ah, and then you're like, I guess that's how I behave, uh, you know. And it's it's so if that had never happened, that group of guys that had never happened, they're all older. They're all in like high school. We were ten years old. They were doing that to us. If we had if that had never happened, who would I be? I don't know if I'd be a comedian to be honest with you. You know what, Bert? We was actually gonna do a molestation episode. And uh, we wrote it in everything. I think it was episode seven. And it was so heavy for me. I scrapped it. Mm. But it, once they picked me up for a second season, uh, I kind of put it together. So because I don't I, when, when you're talking about something like molestation, I want people to be able to relate to it. But I also want them to be able to enjoy it and laugh mm-hmm. and, and heal. Mm, because when right. you can, like I say Heels all the time, the word. when you can, when you can take the darkest shit in your life and you can laugh at it, then you got control of it. So I don't want to put it out there. You, you just fucking crying because yeah. that's not how I want you to see a black woman or a woman period sure. or a boy uh, been through this shit. I want you yeah. to be able to heal and say, I, I get it or I understand it or I'm glad you did that. Like when I'm talking about my life on stage and people come like, oh my God, you're living my life and they're all racist. That's you the know. crazy thing about your fan base is your fan base is, is the most diverse. Group. Yes. It's, the, it's crazy. No one's yeah, got but a fan But I don't base think like it's you. crazy at all. No, no, it is. I don't and think I'll it's crazy why. at all because I think you are such a very real person. Yeah, yeah. But and it's, people but it's, resonate with real more than they resonate with race. No, you're I right. Think. And you're right. And that's why it is. But when you look at how this business is set up, this business is set up to pretty much. To say I am a, to yes. this business say, set up to say I to am an urban, mm-hmm. fat, loud, black woman. <laughs> right. But so just so happened, I fell through the white folks crack. And they's like, how the fuck did this shit happen? Mm-hmm. Because I wasn't going to let you guys pigeonhole me. I, I mean, not you guys, but I wasn't going to let the fucking industry pigeonhole me. I, I I think I'm unique. I think I got stories. I think I'm funny. I don't dance. I don't split. I don't suck dick. I don't talk about all of that stuff. So I try to find, you know, I don't do I do not do a lot of current events. I try to find out what's real to me and other people. Like I was just telling my friend, and I'm, I'm talking about menopause because I'm going through menopause. Mm. And I was on the phone and I said, is it common for menopause to hit you in the crack of your ass and tear your t- your, tear your panty liners up? <laughs> but you know how flashes go everywhere, yeah, right? Yeah, but lately, mine has been hitting me in the crack of my ass, and my panty liner is soaked. So I'm like, well, my pussy is never dry, but <laughs> I can't get never make it dark. Like, uh, I don't know why they <laughs> look at their face. I don't know. Just like, it's super fun. You get ready. It's like, real. Fun. I, I hope that my I hope that my my family wouldn't enjoy me as much as your family enjoys you. I enjoy my, daughters, my family. I did I did stand up not stand up but I did a show in front of my daughters the other night for uh, the variety thing that variety. Oh, thing. congratulations! Thank I you. saw you on that. And so and I made a joke about agent agents. I almost said Asians. I made a joke about agents. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to tear this house down if you do that. <laughs> I, uh, I made a joke about agents, and I said that agents are like the female orgasm. You think they don't exist, or they're, and it's not real, and then all of a sudden you have one. You're like, shit, I need more of that. And it was my, it's not the best joke in the world, but my daughters were like, oh. And I was like, what? It's what I do for a living. It's, I, I don't- See, what it is, your kids think you guys don't fuck. So, you know, they think we old and we don't fuck. You have to tell them, hey, I suck your daddy dick every nine days. Do that, Leanne. Do that yeah, tonight. You should tell them that. <laughs> do that. Talk about that. That's molestation like mental. No, that's not. <laughs> because they think we yeah. old. They think our pussy's dusty is in the trash can. <laughs> and they be like, oh, y'all don't fuck. I be like, we be fucking. When our, when our, when our, blood, when our blood sugar is low and our blood pressure is right, we fuck. Yeah. Oh, my blood pressure, man. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, my blood. I follow my blood pressure so much lately. Yeah. Like, I'm so into my blood pressure and it dictates, 
You ever let's talk to someone who has really high it blood dictate pressure? Dictate your dick because if <laughs> it it's does. high, you ain't got no dick. I I remember trying to jerk off in Brazil one time. What? It was in a bathroom, and I was like, I was hungover, and I thought that would turn me turn it over for me. Like I was hungover as shit, and I was like, if I jerk off, I'll get a bunch of serotonin in my head, and I'll be able to start my day. And I was like, I remember going like, I bet my blood pressure's through the fucking roof right now because no one was into it. My hand had barely any blood in it. Like there was nothing. <laughs> And I had to look at myself maybe. in the mirror. I go, I guess I'm not that into you. <laughs> maybe you were drunk. <laughs> maybe I was still drunk. drunk. I was like, still, drunk. still drunk. Your dick wasn't woke. Your hand wasn't woke. Your dumb ass mind just say, Jack your dick. And your dick's like, I'm asleep, Bert. Your hand was like, I'm not ready, Bert. <laughs> I love when you talk to someone who has high blood pressure and then you realize your blood pressure isn't all that bad. And they're like, hey, hey, hey you know, they're ringing in your ears. And you're like, what? And like, you know, when your blood pressure's up and you have that. It feels like there's a nail in the center of your head and your ears are ringing. And I was like, I've never had that. <laughs> Mine's ringing because I, I suffer with vertigo. I get vertigo too. Yeah, I got vertigo from, um, um, I just said, I was just in the hospital probably six months ago. I started a diet and I, uh, and I did it on with my fans and I fucked around and uh, competed against my friend and we competed against a guy in Australia who clowned mountains. So I at least wanted to come in third place. Oh, my God. I walked my ass off that day. I woke up the next morning. The room was spinning. My titties was upside the, upside the window sill. And I'm like, call down one of the bitches dying. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and I couldn't see. I was in the hospital for about six, seven days. Were you, know you know really? You know what? You know what? You know what? Mm -hmm. you know what uh, not to, not that's a long time to be in the hospital. Well, when you got good insurance, it's like you can stay as long as you want. <laughs> Get like me out of the hospital the second I get But in, I couldn't I see. I literally, it was not, I had to have, this time I had to have therapy. Mm -hmm. Well, I went to a therapy uh, and they turned me upside down. And because what it is, is when you have vertigo, your hair follicles, because then your ears that go back and forth, they, they tell your, your sound to go mm -hmm. to your brain. Yeah. Well, they get stuck. So this, this is what they told me. They said they, my, my hair follicles is stuck and they're so small. There's nothing man can do to, you know. So they try to turn you all different kind of ways to get those hair follicles going to keep Jeez. your vertigo down. Really? That's it crazy. helped too. It helped a lot. I mean, I could start to see again. I wasn't dizzy. You had legit vertigo. I yeah, get vertigo. I walk around with vertical medication. Bird I can tell vertigo. when it's. No, Bird I don't, hang he on. don't have vertigo. Don't, I have he doesn't subtle have vertigo. vertigo. Either that or I'm having a stroke. One or the other. Vertigo. <laughs> vertigo. I have vertigo. Which is. That's where I make imaginary. other people dizzy. It's imaginary. <laughs> so did, who diagnosed you? Your damn self? What? Who diagnosed you with vertigo? <laughs> I don't even. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you By the way, that was that was that was that was white guy translating black chick for a second. I was like, "Huh? What did you just say?" <laughs> Vertigo. Yeah, no. Uh, I uh, I went to the doctor the other day. I had to get a physical to get my surgery, and uh, they always ask you, "Do you feel dizzy?" And I always lie. I go, "No, nah, never feel dizzy." But I do feel dizzy when I put my head on the pillow. It, I, it once I hit the pillow, my brain goes from 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 like like turns and i it takes a second to settle and i said i have to be honest with you because i'm going into surgery i do feel dizzy at times like if i lay down too quickly i i'll get dizzy and she goes i think that's vertigo i don't think it's i don't think it's a stroke <coughs> she was taking my blood pressure and my blood pressure was fine did you get vaccinated uh yeah nice. did you no i don't believe in that shit the uh yes no. he did <laughs> yes he did Hey, we all are. No, yeah. yeah you I, I, I just got I just got my first shot. Really? Yeah. Don't That's, talk about vaccinated. I bitch over there crazy. Oh, wait, she's anti-vaxxing. She reads CBC and CNN shit. Let me uh, tell you, I I will I have to side with any any African American who decides not to get vaccinated. It makes sense. It and, makes and listen, sense. it makes sense. Not listen, I don't I can't agree with you 100% because I, I believe you shouldn't get vaccinated. I do, but I'm also white. I trust the government. I trust I trust doctors. <laughs> yeah, but if you're black, you should not trust the government or doctors. Ah, that's it's, real shit. It's real because you hear that? Real this shit. did not turn out well for those guys in Tuskegee. Oh, like, thank you. So yeah. many motherfuckers act like Tuskegee wasn't real. And they it was that. very real. Yeah, and they rubbed out that fucking olive oil on their back and gave their dicks claps. And it was it really was a it really was an organization. It really was a, a treatment that's the draw big dicks. Yeah. That's what it was. Oh and, and it did. We were just saying, what if what if, what if, who was I just saying this with yesterday? Was it Segura? We were saying, what if they gave the vaccination to black people and slowly it was taking away uh, characteristics that made people black? Like all of a sudden your voice couldn't raise 
past a certain level octave, you were like, wait, how come I can't? no one can hear me? No, I'm not loud anymore. Oh shit, my hands aren't moving the way I need them to in a conversation. Okay, dance. And then like all of a sudden you're like, shit, I'm saying things like it, probably and, and uh, <laughs> inarguably. Oh, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> and then all of a sudden they were like, oh, they're turning us white. Oh shit. We, we say probably. Motherfucker. Wait, did I say motherfucker? I, I motherfucker. Oh God, what's going on? We say probably and arguably in court. Yeah, <laughs> you want to hear something crazy? So the fan said, well, Miss Pat, before your TV show come out and you really blow, you should do a picnic with us. And I said, let me have a talk with you, white man. <laughs> Black folks don't do picnics. Do you know where that shit come from? I said, we do barbecue. And he's like, no. I said, picnics is pick a nigga. Back in the day, white folks ate a uh, premier cheese sandwich and watch niggas hanging out of trees. I ain't going to no motherfucking picnic with you, white man. You better take your ass to a barbecue. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you can serve the same food. Just call it something yeah, totally you get, different. No, you got a grill. That's, That's what you got. Ain't no, black folk don't sit on no fucking lawn with no, with no, what is that shit they put down to sit down? A blanket, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, a, and you got an army of ants running to get your, your yeah. watermelon yeah. and walking away. Well, no, water, why did I have to be watermelon? <laughs> but you know what I mean. What, I just thought of the thing you take at a picnic. Yeah, and then you got to roll over to get up. No, well, fuck that shit. Give me a bitch and let me sit down in the chair. And, and, and some music, some good old eyes and haze. I'm not doing that shit. I'm not Ooh. doing no fucking... I don't want to eat no pimento cheese sandwich up under no sun. I you want know, to eat fucking pimento cheese either. You, you want to know Why so funny? Why not? You know it's so good. Funny? I love pimento cheese sandwiches. You know the whitest shit uh, and it's disgusting <laughs> What to me is what? cottage cheese and peaches. I agree. When you Ooh. eat that Ooh. shit, I that shit. I was like, cottage cheese and peaches, nope. cottage cheese and pineapple, cottage cheese and anything is fucking good. I pass. No. Hard pass. That's like Mm-mm. baby shit. <laughs> and and peaches. It's gross. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Why he's, yeast gross. infection. She's a yeast infection. Yeast <laughs> infection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because sometimes my drawers do come out like that. So that's the, what, so that's <laughs> that's the whitest shit. What's the blackest shit? <laughs> uh, What's something you see black people eating? You're like, I could not do that. I, no, I like pig feet. No, what what are you you gotta tell me that I'm black. I know. I, I like see I like I like What is the blackest shit you see somebody like, uh, I don't know how you eat that. Uh-huh. Now me with a with, with since my life's changed a little bit, I can't eat that polished meat. Spam. If I go down that aisle with polished meat, yeah. that shit scares me. Yeah. No, what really fucks me up it uh is um when we was little, we used to eat chicken feet. I love chicken feet. No, it's not, my mama didn't have no teeth, right? So she would ball them with noodles. And back in the day, that was really good. She loved them with the nails on them. And she would stick that foot in her mouth and she was missing like four teeth. And she, all the little meat be out there. It just be little, little gristle. Our friends are Asian and they make chicken They're feet. They're all a about lot. chicken feet. Yeah. Oh, she loved that I shit. I love chicken feet. That's when you know your community going down. If you go in your local Walmart and they got chicken feet, <laughs> nigga, move. <laughs> <laughs> your house about to lose some value. You know what's interesting to me? When I was in Serbia, I would play. Oh, I got really into uh, older, uh, like the uh, older R and B, meaning like um, like Otis Redding, like uh, the Bill Withers, like Drew the, Hill, like kind of older. And I could, I would play it, <laughs> and white Serbian people couldn't tell that it wasn't current. Now, if we play a song. Look like if I play this shit. song, I'm gonna play a song, and you'll hear it immediately and go, "This isn't current." But it, it, it's, but but they go, they would listen to it and go, "Is that like a new song?" This is a song. So they just didn't have R and B in Serbia. They didn't or have R&B. black people. They don't Ever. have black people. No, there's no black people. In there's Serbia. not. There's not. Why not? Uh, I saw. I walked the chose- streets one day for four hours because I had to quarantine, but they let me walk around. I saw one Asian person, and that is it. What's Everyone else, white people. Everybody's white. When you hear this, you immediately go. This, this is yep. just great song. And they'd be right? like, they'd be like, is that new? Who, who wrote that? And I'm like, no, this, this is like <laughs> 50 years old. Are you beginning kidding me? And but they couldn't even tell what was current hip hop versus old school, like what we would acknowledge. What the is, fuck do they listen to? Uh, they, they listen to a lot of trance music, like a lot of dance music. Um, yeah, like yeah, yeah. They Techno. like they like they like going to a club. And, That's deaf people music. Yeah, I'm not a fan <laughs> of trance music. Yeah, I had, when I was young, this guy I never get he drove a Volvo, and that's when we were putting the boom in the car. 
And he, oh, he had the baddest fucking Volvo hooked up with all the boom in the car. And I didn't know he was there. And to somebody, I was like, that motherfucker, get on my nerve with all that wrecking in that car. He can't heal. He deaf. And I was like, why he got his radio up so loud? But he, because, he listened to hip hop, but it was always loud. He had the twenty, the thirties in the back, the big ass speakers. Yeah. But he loved the sound from it. He could feel God. it, probably. Yeah. See, that's that's it. also that's that's uh, location wise is whether or not you like bass in your music, is because South. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the South. That's and totally because, Miami. Because, and I'm I'm saying this for Leanne mostly, but you know when I first moved to New York, I could not get into New York hip hop because New York hip hop is meant to be listened to in headsets because mm -hmm. you're walking around the city. So it's not like meant to be driven to. Like mm -hmm. in the South, you drive to that. Like Miami, that all all of what we listen to is how we took in our music was driving. Yeah, because I never could get into what was that group called? Quest Four, Quest something. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't get into that. I, I, I missed I the whole. I missed that. I never enjoyed the um, the. I I would. Uh, what was the what was the Cosby Show spinoff of? Uh, where they uh, went to college. Single. I'm not, I know it was um, different, different world. world. Different world had a, a vein of hip hop that was all like tribe called Quest, like the ones where they were the Af the uh, it was leather African mm -hmm. uh, thing. And so I never got into that thoughtful uh, hip hop. I I don't know. I always like my hip hop. I couldn't I couldn't get into it. I mean, I, I guess it was because you know when hip hop first hit my ears for real, it was Luke. Uh, oh, yeah. What was that? What was that uh, pussy song? Pop that, that pussy, pussy. Pop pop that, that pussy. pussy. And I remember my brother pulled up, and uh, I was like, "Who the? F they letting people cuss like that?" Ooh. And it was Luke. Luke took it to a whole nother God. level. I met him. I you met did? him, and I I called him Uncle Luke, and I was like, "I gotta tell you, man, you my whole high school was you." And what's that other song about? Me so horny. You oh, know, yeah. I didn't know that was we out of a movie. Long time. And in college, I mm -hmm. when I in college, when she goes, "What do we get for twenty dollars? Everything you want, everything, everything." I didn't realize that was out of a movie. I remember seeing the movie, and I was like, "They took this out of a song." And they're like, "No, asshole, that song sampled that movie." And I went, "Shut the fuck up." Game changers in hip hop. Mm -hmm. Game changers in hip hop. Definitely two mm -hmm. live crew. Do definitely live crew. NWA. The first yep. time I heard NWA, I can tell you where I was. I had just lit a cigarette. We were in a in my Fox uh, on on in New Smyrna Beach. Sal Carinante put it in, and he's like, "Have you heard of NWA?" And I was like, "No." And I mean, the big thing for us was like the name of the band, and we're like, "Shut up!" Like that was you just didn't hear a name. The band claimed that word in their name, and we listened to that fucking Easy Easy Does It Easy E song. Mm -hmm. uh, woke up quick. At about noon, just thought that I had to be incompetent. And we were like, shut the fuck. That must have been played nonstop in that car. Okay, ready? Now, then, then, by the way, I'm just giving you white perspectives of Game Changers and Hip Hop. Okay. The Chronic album. When you when we yep, were introduced Snoop to Snoop Dogg, when Snoop Dogg came on, oh my God. Everyone was like, who the fuck is this? Yep. I mean, that... The sound of his voice, the way that he slid Ron. He was I mean, so smooth. His cadence is really awesome. Uh, outcast. No. Outcast. Outca too short. It's cooler Bitch. than a polar. Bitch. Oh, he my made, God. Too I just short. Did, I just did something with too short. He made bitch so acceptable. He made bitch. bitch. You wouldn't. You didn't mind a motherfucker calling you bitch if you did it like too short did it. <laughs> too short. Uh, Tupac. Too I did not like Tupac. Oh I just thought he was so gangster. I was like, what is wrong with this boy? And then when he died, I started really listening to his mouth. Oh my God, he's fucking smart as hell. I fell in love with uh with right before his album before he went into prison. Well, he was in prison when his album came out, I think. I was was it All Eyes on Me or was that Tupacalypse? I don't know. For whichever one it was, I fell in love with that album. And I and I remember thinking, this is how innocent I was. And I mean this sincerely i remember thinking i was bummed out that he had gotten tattoos because i was like what what does his mom think about that like <laughs> how, but well, he's got that forever <laughs> and then i was like and then i pivoted <laughs> by the time his album when he came out of prison came out and his picture was him on the cover in like a, a leather vest with I, it looked I, I felt like he had two watches on and i was looking at all his tattoos i was like oh i gotta get a tattoo 
Like it was so cool. But Tupac was a real game changer. One of the best. Biggie, when Biggie came out with uh, when uh, his album right right before Notorious right before he died. Right the first one was was crazy. Oh, I didn't hear the first one until later. Who was the first one? Uh, uh, Big Papa. That song oh there. God. I remember my sister could not stay stop singing Big Papa. Man, I, I I'm we're probably glancing over a bunch of them. Yeah, we are. But, we're gonna get a bunch, of, ones, bunch of emails. Well, hey, motherfucker, what about this one? What about well, this? It's one? crazy when you meet someone. And they're like, and they're like, you didn't listen to Gangstar growing Biz up. He's Marquise. He just passed away. I met him. You did? Yeah, we, you know what? My sister used to love Biz Marquis. Oh, baby, you. And I told myself, I was like, I, I don't think he can sing. I yeah. think something wrong with him. But she loved Biz Marquis. I couldn't get over his lip hanging on every song. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, she, okay. You know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say because I'm, I'm going through a bit of a, uh, a nostalgic phase for this guy. Like, I'm, I'm rooting for a second act in his story is Will Smith. Will Smith, when I first heard Will Smith, I was probably in like. Fifth I went to grade. a Will Smith concert. No. Yes, it was Will Smith, Fat Boys. This is how <gasps> the long. Fat ago. Boys. The fat Boys, <laughs> fat boys oh, were so the fucking R- great. R- Run DMC R- was yep. fucking. Run DMC was fucking. So many good. good. So back in the day, we was we lived right by the Omni, which is uh, probably the Georgia Dome or uh, the, uh, yeah, the Mercedes Benz so, Stadium yeah. now. Yep. Remember the Omni? Yeah, I remember. They had a skate ring yeah. inside. I forgot she from Georgia. Mm-hmm. So they used to do all the concerts. So literally, you could hear all the fucking concerts right there in the hood if you just listen close enough. And we, me and my brother, would cut grass. I think those seats was like $8 for good seats back then. It was early 80s. Yeah. And me and my brother Aunt, we would go to the concerts. And I saw uh, Flavor Flavor, Will Smith, and I want to say the fat boy, but I'll never forget Will Smith sound. Parents just don't understand. And after him, Flavor Flavor closed it with uh, that big ass clock on him. Yeah. And we was at the Omni. I saw, I saw Run DMC. I saw LL Cool J Ooh. back in the day. When we lived in Vine City, they used to do, they had this little arena outside where they would bring local acts that wasn't really famous, was blowing up to uh, Morehouse and Marsh Brown's like arena there where they played football. And they would let them do concert, it was summer concert. I saw LL Cool J. No way. Yes, Uh-oh. I did. I used to send them out back here because I lived in Vine City. And so they would bring them all through the black colleges. They would give them a black college run. Yeah. And we lived right there in the background. I and mean, we lived right there in Vine City. Just oh walked through the God. gate. It was free to the public. That's LL awesome. Cool J was so good. Yes. He was. And he, well, you remember, he was so like, he was like, oh he was like God. seven. Hang on. He was 17. Going back to Cali. When, oh, when my he, God. Can I tell you? I just played that for Jimmy Tetro. Jimmy Tetro's in my movie. I was, I was singing in Spanish, right? So we used to do, we used to sing songs in Spanish. And then I would sing them in Russian when I was in Russia. And I was singing Going Back to Cali. And he goes, and Jimmy goes, hey, man, I, I don't want to call you out on being an old guy, but I think you're singing that song wrong. And I was like, what? And he's like, he's like, you're singing it wrong. It's, uh, it's it goes i'm going going back back to cali wrong cali song. and i w- and i said totally jimmy wrong song. i said you're singing the hook of the original song the the original song was ll cool j and he's like who i was like ll cool j and somebody he was remade like, it B- notorious big yeah it's on his yeah back to cali cali I'm going, going back, back to Cali. Going Cali. back to Cali. Yeah. yeah. Was and it so, good? Yeah. Oh, it's a great fucking song. Yeah, it is. Yeah. The, the, the lead I in. I remember that. Puff calls, uh, calls Big and he's like still sleeping. He's like, it's so funny. He's like, the plane leaves in 15 minutes or whatever. Like, it's just such a, such like a, like a, a back way before 9-11 when you could get to the airport in like 30 minutes left. And it's, it's just such an interesting slice of life. And that was on his double album that went was huge right before he died. He died right after that in, in eight, in March or February of 1997. 97. Yeah. He died in 97. Nine, Tupac died in 96. I, I remember, I don't, can I tell you the only reason I know that is that me and Biggie were on the Rolling Stone cover together. Uh, I was the number one party animal in the country and funeral held for Biggie in Brooklyn. And it was on, it was, that was in April of 97. And, but, uh, but, but it's so funny because, uh, man, LL Cool J was, Mama Said Knock You Out was a great fucking song. Yes. Yes, he was, he was, was 17 when he came out with his first that's album. That's insane. I know. Well, that's uh, probably when I first seen him. 
in our backyard in Vine City. I'm telling you, they was on a black mm-hmm. college run. We saw LL. The Fat Boys came through there. Um, I love Fat Boys. Uh, Fat Boys oh. were so. Who else was out at that time? Um, Salt and Pepper. Mm. They came through there. That. It was awesome. you know what I'm talking about in Vine City where they have the black. They had, okay, it was who right was... in our backyard. It was free to the public and free to college students. So wait, who's so? Who was the? I saw Salt and Peppers in concert too. Who was the other Salt and Pepper? Was it Rex in Effect? Who was the? There was another Salt and Pepper, like a, a another duo black chick. Uh, R- SWV. I, no, who mm-hmm. was it? You know who I'm talking about? I know you're talking about too, but I can't think of it either. I was Salt really and Pepper into- was fucking amazing. You god damn it, there were so many Queen Latifah. Uh, I remember they just gave her that honorary thing at the BET Awards, Lifetime Achievement Award. They did. Mm-hmm. I remember she deserves she it. Uh uh, what's the girl name? Uh they was very popular, uh Quisha. Remember uh Roxanne. Roxanne, 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 Shantae. Roxanne, Shantae. Roxanne, Shantae. She was Roxanne. fourteen years old. Uh-huh. Oh, I remember that shit. It was like ten of them bitches. One, <laughs> wasn't it? Like five of them. I, ju- I just watched a documentary on her. It was only one. It was, it was Roxanne and Roxanne Shante. I think was the that same the person. same person? Yeah, the same. that was the same person. It, there was a documentary that was just made on that whole thing. By the way, she's <laughs> she's still young as fuck. I think she's like forty five. No, like I, she's not crazy. old. Yeah. Like and she still looks good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah is that what it, was that the documentary? Uh, I can't, no, Roxanne, Roxanne. Dude, I remember I make it feel hotter than it is in Granada. The R O X A N N E. Roxanne is who I be. That is, uh, that, ah, Roxanne, Roxanne. I often feel bad for uh, the guys like like who started hip hop. Like Curtis Blow. And all those guys who just. Oh. That's who Fucking Houdini. Love Kurt Ooh, I saw Houdini, Houdini at that place. I saw Nucleus. Curtis Blow. Curtis Nucleus was Nucleus great. was fucking awesome. Who uh, Houdini just died? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he died uh this year. He died this year. Oh, man, yeah, I, I heard. I heard someone punch Houdini. him in the stomach right before he was about to perform. What the what? fuck are that's you talking how, about? That's how the real Houdini died. Right. I, was, I don't know about joke. the real Houdini. Yeah. Maybe not my, the best audience. No, <laughs> I don't of know. Black people going, hey, you, know, you know how real Houdini died, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> no, no one about? got that joke. Um, <clears throat> Curtis Blow, Houdini. I saw all of them over there at the college. Oh, that's amazing, we, we lived, Pat. We lived there. And See, I'm, the I'm ignorant when it comes to hip hop in that. So I, ne- I did not like Migos when they came out. I did not like uh, them. I don't. I'm forty. I'm forty nine, and I'm not gonna say I don't like the Amigo. I'm a, my son loves the fucking Amigo. I can't understand what the fuck they saying. Yeah, well, I already speak broken English, and so if you are gonna break the English and, and do it fast, I'm like, I give up. Yeah, <laughs> I, I did not like Migos when they came out, and 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 then and then I was hanging with, hanging with Jimmy, and I was explaining who I like in hip hop. He's like, buddy, I hate to break your heart, but I think you're gonna like Migos a lot. And I started listening to Migos again. <clears throat> at, like after not listening to them and I fell in love with them. And that is how sadly a lot of hip hop comes to me is like, I buy the album. I don't get it. I don't listen to it. Then I hear something on something and I go, what's that? And they're like, Oh, that's TI. And you're like, Oh shit. And then I go through a huge T where when I found TI, when I, I remember, I remember hearing about him. My I think Ludacris rapper. signed him to a deal and then he fought to get his, publishing back or whatever i think that's what i I, maybe i'm thinking of someone else but i remember hearing of him and then finding him when georgia was born and he already had like three albums out and four albums out and i am like now i'm like a ride or die for ti like he is my favorite probably my favorite now i my crush is ice cube but my favorite rapper is fucking ti ice cube because you know i was on his last album on Ice Cube? I heard oh, that. Yeah, yeah, I knew you were on I could yeah. not believe when he asked me. I was like, you sure you dialed the right number? And he's like, yeah. yeah, I want you to do this. I was like, I don't know shit about rap. He's like, J- I just want you to talk. And literally, I stood in that, that studio and talked, and he cut it up like that. I said, nigga, you made me sound good. You made me sound like, <laughs> you made me sound like I was tough as fuck. <laughs> but I was, I was so, it was such an honor to do that. I, I couldn't even believe. I sat in my hotel room, and I was like, I can't believe T.I. just asked me to be on his fucking album. Yeah. His, how's his podcast? Is it fun? It was very fun. It was very fun. I don't know if he still is doing it, but it was very fun. So, so did how do you meet someone like Ti? Like me and Ti has the same agent. Really? Mm-hmm. But you guys, you guys grew up around the same area, right? But never met. 
Never, never met. met. Mm-mm. We uh, I had an idea for something, and just so happened me and Ti has the same agent that reps me, him, Fifty Cent, Mary J. Blood, and everybody. <laughs> and yeah. I wanted to meet Ti, and he hooked it up. That's great. Mm-hmm. See, that and ain't we, just and something. Was just, he was so fucking real, and you know, because you in this business, it's hard to find a friend. It's hard to find real people. Yeah, it's totally hard to find is. people. You know, just honest with you. He's yeah. an honest person. You know, when I'm not busy on the road, he play cards on Sunday. I, I think you be cheating too, T.I. But I <laughs> <laughs> you and Tiny Ass be cheating. We saw y'all ass last time I was over there. Oh, but I go over his house and we play cards. And, you know, he have a chef that he's a really honest guy. I mean, I feel, you know how you could just meet somebody and you almost feel like mm-hmm. they're family. Yeah. You know, that's how I feel at, with T.I. I loved the, that's great. the movie he did with... That's great. Uh, the movie he did, I forget the name of it, with Big Boy. Yeah. Oh, you ain't heard? ATL. ATL you yeah. ain't heard? <laughs> Light skin dudes ain't in style no more. Yeah, he <laughs> One can One of my act favorite too. lines ever. <laughs> he can fucking act. Yeah, he can I, act. I that's, love Well, that's the thing about acting. Acting is pretty interesting in that I think it's one of, it's, it's kind of like fucking. If you get in your head about it, you're going to suck. Like, if you go to have sex and you're thinking about fucking, then you're going to suck. But if you just let it go and just go, this is how I fuck, I'm not going to think too much about it, then usually people like it. Does that make sense? Yes. Well, if you're Thank having you. fun while you're fucking, then they like it, right? You have to be having fun. I don't, I don't like, if, if I think about having sex, I'm bad. Like, I'm like. Who the fuck think about having sex if you with your partner? I, I think you, a lot of, I think, I don't know. I th- do you come home and think about fucking her? You just. I think about fucking her all the time, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but do he doesn't you, actually do, think about it. I don't think it's the brain It just happened, right? Yeah. I just asked my husband, hey, you want pussy? I'm going to go ahead and wash it. You want it? <laughs> yeah, you know? I'm, I'm washing it if you're going to have it. <laughs> well, and, and then I can, you know, if you've been together with somebody, you know, he took a bath. Well, let me go take a bath. You might want to fuck. Yeah. And usually we both fall asleep and it happened the next day before the sun come up. <laughs> right. So we need to be energized. Okay. who, What, what <laughs> hip hop artist do you think is the best at having sex? Think about it. Think about it. Rapper. Just let's, no, let's just go rapper. I don't want to put I don't want to bring Usher into it because that becomes complicated. I'm thinking we're talking just rapper. Just rapper. Who do you think is the best? I sex? say 50 Cent. I was saying 50 Cent too. Well, 50 Cent look like he can fuck. 50 Cent <laughs> looks like he can fuck and he talks look, and he licks his look, lips. Let me tell you everything. why. Let me tell you why. Because I don't know what he did to Vivica. It's been 20 years and she still love it. When a nigga lay pipe like that, I'm telling you, when a nigga lay pipe like that and you still talking about it and you was like, I still love you. He's like, why, bitch? He done did all this. He said, you look at you. I'm telling you, it's oh. 50, uh, 50 can fuck. I guarantee 50, 50, 50 can lead, fuck. 50 is like a, uh, remember back in the day they used to get him vaccination shots with that big ass thing and stamp that thumb? Yeah. That's the type of shit he leave on a bitch. He leave his stamp. <laughs> so when another nigga go, go down there and they lick it, they be like, what's this groove? Thing? Oh, that's the 50 cent stamp he left behind. <laughs> he gonna leave a mark, huh? <laughs> he gonna leave a mark. Leave I a imagine, mark. and then he muscle bound and he talk shit and them old niggas who talk shit he always can fuck. shit. Oh he my talks God. It's 50 shit. cent. I'm like, telling Leanne, you. Leanne, you don't understand how funny 50 cent is he's oh, yeah. very fucking funny sometimes he, he make me so mad i'm like 50 stop being so goddamn mean he he, he sued bitches for six thousand dollars i'm like you don't need six thousand dollars 50 cent tweeted tweeted to floyd mayweather one time oh god he be killing floyd he destroys floyd mayweather floyd mayweather is a boxer i know floyd okay mayweather. i'm just i don't know sometimes i just make sure you know i know floyd mayweather is. and he She's said hit. he said you know i make fun of Floyd a lot is a tweet. I make fun of Floyd a lot. And uh, I just want everyone to know Floyd is the champ. He's one of the greatest boxers that's ever lived. And if someone could just read this to him, that would be great. (laughs) (laughs) That was hysterical. See, I remember that tweet. He said to Flippy, hold on. I swear to God, he said to to Floyd Mayweather, I'll give you a million dollars to read that book, to read one page and with no mistakes out of, out of Lord of the Rings, one page with no mistakes. <laughs> you got to read it out loud. I'll give you a million dollars. And Floyd Mayweather said no, Except because pass. you can't practice on the page. I get to pick the page and you got to read it. Oh my God. By the way, I couldn't do that. I couldn't, I couldn't do, do that. All those so so crazy made, been so made up names. But you, you got to like fucking, such a businessman. Oh my God, he know what he's doing. We got. He, oh my God, I've never met him, but he know what he's doing. So I would say 
the number one fucking rapper for me would be um would be 50 Cent. The number one R and B fucker for me will be Bobby Brown. See, these oh, are the people. Oh, Bobby who Brown. Need Bobby <laughs> Brown has dick because you kn- Whitney Houston could never. I'm, leave I'm only him. naming the people who women couldn't get over. I know good ghetto dick. So good these are dick. certified good ghetto dick. 50 Cent, Bobby Brown. Who can eat you really good Bobby will be Brown. R. Kelly. <laughs> oh, oh Lord. <laughs> oh Lord. A, he's a he's a certified vagina eater. I'm telling you, when you got nine bitches crawling the court saying, I was a participant. He, he, he put that tongue on that. <laughs> Bobby Brown, there was a there was a documentary of Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown. And where it was it on like VH1 or something? I yep. forget. I watched all of it. I was in love with Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston was the first concert I ever went to. Mm -hmm. She's so good. Did you see her? You know, I I got into, I don't know where I was, but I started watching the national anthem. Mm -hmm. People who sang the national anthem. Nobody sung it like her. Nobody sung it like her. She sung it different for the for the Super Bowl that was in Tampa. Mm -hmm. And she sang it her way. She didn't refuse to sing it the way they wanted it sang. Mm -hmm. She sang it with her inflection her like a little I'm bit I'm so of, glad you said sing what did I say you didn't say sing because black folks say sing sing that it. shit well I, I, I watched this I was a, it was a documentary made by black people for black people okay so I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm, re, I'm just so stealing you it you yeah fubu-ing. I'm boo-booing it <laughs> and so but but she she killed that shit they say she's the best one ever anyone, anyone uh, I got Austin, it Austin were you the only one that got that I got it God what damn it. I said she killed that shit. Yeah, she killed that shit. <laughs> <laughs> she the best one ever. Uh yeah, she's the yeah. best one ever. She is that made me cry. Why did I why was I watching that? I remember I ended up crying watching it. It's that good. You know what makes me cry? I have it on my phone is when she sings one moment in time from the nineteen eighty eight Olympics. I cannot listen to that whole song I without crying. You know, you know we met her, right? Mm-mm. Oh, uh, we it, have a yeah. So now I'll tell the story. story if you, if you, if you, how would you like to hear the story? Would you want to hear it very you want accurate, the truth, or, or do you, you want, want to hear the, it, you want to hear the, the good stage story? version or the truth? I want the truth because that was truth? one of my sucks. favorite. The truth what? sucks. Go ahead, tell her the truth. You tell the stage story. It's no, not I don't want to hear. Story. What, I just want to hear the truth. The truth. I'll tell you the truth. Here's the truth. Hang on. Ready? The truth is, Georgia was three, and she tripped in the lobby of our apartment building and broke her jaw right here. I would, and I broke would tell her all four this. front teeth inside her gum. So she needed to have them surgically removed. It no. was awful. I was on the road. I was, was in three. The, at the Cincinnati Funny Bone back when the in the old Cincinnati Funny Bone. I was on Jameson tour. I get a call. You need to come home. So it's a Saturday. So I fly home Sunday morning. The surgery is happening Monday morning. And and the the marching orders are get your shit together. You need to be a dad right now, not an emotional. No, uh, every time. Well, wreck. okay. Truth, motherfucker cried every breath. Couldn't stop crying. And I kept going, okay, as soon as you walk in this door, your shit needs to be together because she's three and she needs her daddy and you got to get your shit together. He'd been crying for like 36 hours okay. straight. All right, we get it. We and get I it. was like, it. you got this has to stop. Also, some yeah. that Everyone shits stop. on toxic masculinity. And all of a sudden, when I show you a real sensitive feminine <laughs> no, man, everyone fucking like, shits on that too. That was like not It was bad. And so he did. He walked in the door and he was amazing. And we took her to have her teeth done. She was the first patient of the morning. We, we walk in. There's no one in the waiting room. And they said that to us. They're like, We'll get you in before anyone's here. Yeah. So I feel very comfortable being an emotional mess. I'm crying right. when we walk in. Uh, I've got it together. I took it. I you took had Xanax. it. You kept it together because you, Georgia, wouldn't. She, they had to put her under, obviously, and they couldn't find a vein. So they were like poking her six, seven, eight times in both arms. They went in her legs. Oh, I forgot about that. And she yeah. was freaking out. And they out. needed to give her gas. And they needed to give her gas, but they needed her calm. But she wasn't. You know, mama, you freak out on mama, but you stay really pretty okay with dad. So dad really got her calm enough so they could get her under. Yeah. But it was awful. And so then, like, so then when so they bad. put her under, they're like, all right, leave the room. She'll be done in a little bit. We're going to do it. It would be about 10 minutes. 10 minutes. And, <laughs> and I. There's one bathroom. One bathroom. By the way, I, Bert walks I would out tell the door. all of this in the real story. Keep going. Uh, 
Bert walks out the door into the bathroom, locks himself in the bathroom. I'm like, where the fuck am I supposed to go? He's <laughs> sobbing in the bathroom. Now I got to go sit in the lobby and sob because it was really awful watching them just poker and scream. So I sit down in the lobby and I'm crying. And now, now here's where here's the difference between a, a pedestrian telling a story and a person telling and a, and a person a, and a comedian telling a story. <laughs> okay. Leanne will tell you the story. She goes, "I sit down, I'm sobbing, and then Whitney Houston walks in." No, a, that's not actually what happened. But but what happens is I walk tell in. a goddamn story, white people. Yeah, I walk <laughs> in to the lobby and I'm crying uncontrollably, and there's this black chick who's trying to make eye contact with me to calm me down. And like, like, you know, like, just be like, it's okay. And I, but I'm crying uncontrollably and it's just awkward. It's me, Leanne, a black chick and a black dude. And with, and we're, we're there for like maybe seven, five minutes. Yeah. Not and long. then they come in they're like, she's ready. And you could hear everyone go like, thank God, this is getting uncomfortable. We grab Georgia. We take her back into this receiving room to let her like wake up. We know we're holding her. She's got gauze on her mouth. There's blood everywhere. I'm still like. I'm I'm not crying, but I'm like breathing hard. Leanne's got Georgia, and then they close the curtain in this receiving room. Curtain opens back up, and it's the black chick from the lobby. It's Whitney Houston, and she puts her arm around me and says, "It's tough being a daddy, isn't it?" I mean, I'll get emotional thinking about it, and I just and I start crying again. And she like rubs my back, sits down with Leanne, starts rubbing Georgia's head. She's like, "They, you know, they're always your babies." Well, and- what she said was, she said, "You're a good mama. You're a real good mama. She's gonna be fine." And yeah. I was just, I was like, Both oh of us my were God. Like, and it's Whitney fucking Houston. Was, I knew it was Whitney Houston in the lobby. I sat down sobbing and went, oh my God, that's Whitney Houston. And she knew it in the lobby. I was like, oh I my God. I didn't know it in the lobby. I didn't know who it was but in the I lobby. Did. I did. So it's y'all, hard to miss her. So y'all never stopped crying and got a picture? No. no. Well, she, well, so she gets up. She so, was there she for a procedure. Up. Yeah, she's there for a procedure. She comes over to me and she goes, I think you are the funniest comedian. She did not. But, no, she didn't no, say that. she did not. <laughs> she said, you're a good mama. You're such a good mama. She's going to be wife, fine. Bell. <laughs> and the reason we got the good anesthesiologist is because she had flown in right. off tour to get her teeth fixed and had an anesthesiologist there. So that's why we got the good we anesthesiologist. We got her anesthesiologist. And then, and then this is true. She Ugh. then leaves us. She gave me a kiss on the cheek, told me. She I, did not. She says she then bullshit. leaves us. <laughs> not true. I love the She ass. flies me. and I Stop she, dreaming, motherfucker. Tell says, the real truth. She goes, Bobby cries too. She said that. She did not. <laughs> You're so full of shit. I don't even think she talked to you. She talked to she me said, the whole time. She said, I don't even think she talked to you. She, she talked to me the whole time. She, said, she was talking to me about being a mama and she was rubbing George's head. And then the anesthesiologist. Uh, yeah, she goes, she goes, she's so lucky to have a strong male like you in your life. <laughs> No, but the, anesthesi- the anesthesiologist goes, uh, she leaves us and walks away. And they're like, and he goes, so where's Kevin Costner at? And she goes, put me under. <laughs> it was awful. I was like, what an asshole in the moment. How long ago was the bodyguard at that point? Yeah. It'd been like 20 years or something. <laughs> she said, what put, a me, under. put stupid me under. Stupid ass guy. Put me under. Yeah. She's and there so, to get yeah. her teeth fixed. But she she had great teeth too. That's she the did. other thing. Her, she, she had looked perfect fucking teeth. Amazing. She looked uh, like a million dollars. She's but she did. the fact that she that she was in love with Bobby Brown, like he was, his teeth were a wreck. Is he still alive? <laughs> <laughs> you gonna get okay, your ass beat. Mind, maybe I better you gonna be watch. Yeah, I better watch what I your say. Your teeth may be a wreck if yeah, you don't no, watch. Yeah, out. no. But, get but your Bobby Brown, beat. Bobby Brown, uh, he he was not like a conventionally good looking dude. That's why they didn't want to with her. He was the bad boy. He was the bad boy. I thought yeah. he was good looking. Yeah, Bobby Brown. They 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 showed them at like Atlantis, and I had never wanted to live a life more. Bobby Brown like woke up, went down to the bar, started drinking vodka sodas. Whitney came down. She started drinking vodka sodas. They got fucking wasted. They go back up to the room. Are you they, talking about the reality show? Yeah, it was so yeah. much fun. I was like, God damn it. I just want to live that life. It looked like so much fun. Wow. I don't think it looked like fun. I don't well, understand. Yeah, like, no. I fly. You know, fly a lot. We do. Yeah. And I go in the Delta Lounge and people order alcohol at 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, uh, what do you gee, need to know Pat, about that, Pat? I don't know anybody who does that. Yeah, what do you, well, want, what do you need to know, That's how he is. Yeah. Is that what you do? Course, Hell yeah. yeah. It's my I'm, favorite thing in the world. I don't get it what? either. It's my favorite thing in the world. You should try it. It's fucking I'm awesome. not going to drink alcohol before I eat. 
I'm saying uh, that's the best time it. to drink. No, uh, <laughs> no, I don't Pat, think so. Pat, you have a. Cocktail? I don't even fucking drink. First of all, and I'm definitely not. I mean, people like Bloody Mary. I'm like, bitch, it's eight o'clock. Bloody Marys, right? Are no, I don't do it either. So good, Pat. So good. That's why you got vertigo. <laughs> a double Bloody Mary, a double Bloody Mary, spicy. It's such an enjoyable cocktail. And then those same people, you see them get on the plane and, and still drinking. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. what yeah. the fuck? Yeah, sometimes those people pack little bottles of whiskey in their bag and then pour it into little They're called alcoholics. Canisters. No, they're, they're not. Alcoholic. I'm not an alcoholic. I, I first agree of all, with you, Ryan. First of all, Leanne, you know I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> I wish I was an alcoholic. Well, some days. <laughs> the problem is I get all my shit done and, I, and I'm healthy and I still work high out. High functioning. I'm a high functioning high alcoholic. Functioning. And so yeah. I, I, it's never gotten in the way of anything. So I'm never going to stop because so it's it doesn't never gotten count. In the way of anything. Yeah, it doesn't count. It doesn't well, count. I get my shit done. Well, what I do is I wake up and eat. Me too. Okay. First okay. thing. Okay. I can't Coffee function and I without eat. eat. I can't. I, I don't I understand can't. you people. How you wake up and want to. I mean, to me, alcohol will slow you down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It makes and me so sleepy. It makes you fucking crazy. One of the sleepy. best things in the world is to get a, like, a, like a four beer buzz before you get on a plane. Four beer buzz. You trying to start a fight. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not that kind of drinker. Like there are drinkers who, when they drink, their personality changes and they become a different person. I actually think I get quieter sometimes. No, that's inaccurate. <laughs> no, you don't get quieter. Don't you just love her? No, she, I don't. You don't ever get quieter. Boss. No. <laughs> that never happens. I, you get quieter under anesthesia. That's about it. <laughs> did you see me go under anesthesia? I did see you. I said, this motherfucker, he'll put everything on. Right? So be. Segura goes, he goes, you know, sometimes I'm reminded of just how different men we are. I said, why? And he goes, my surgery was very different than your surgery. What I was said, wrong with him? He fe- he tried oh, to jump. Oh, he fell. And his knee exploded and his arm broke. <laughs> I mean, his arm didn't just break. It like twisted and broke and like broke in half. It was bad. And, and goes, I know his wife just had a surgery. Yeah, she, she fell, down fell the stairs. and dislocated her ankle. She fell. Talk oh, back. Oh, come on. And. No, uh, she failed. No, she fell down the stairs. <laughs> but uh, but uh, he goes. I went into surgery and it was very quiet. It was very solemn. And they're like, "Don't worry, everything's going to be good. You're in good hands." And he goes, "You go into surgery like it's a fucking party." He goes, "I didn't. You brought your phone into surgery. Like they don't let you bring phones." He goes, "They took all our goods away, all my stuff away from me." And he goes, "And they're playing music." And I was like, "Yeah, Creedence Clearwater Revival." And he was like, "You invited your anesthesiologist to your Red Rock show?" And I was like, "Yeah. Like I made friends. Like I I'm." Like I, the one of the girl was a fan, and so I was like, uh, like I want to have a good time. I, 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 it's so she was a fan. Yeah, and that's how, and that's how I fly. I want everything to be a treat, a celebration. I don't. I have a hard time with like seriousness, drudgery, drudgery. Uh, I can't get through it. Like the surgery. Drudgery. Once I knew that, and by the way, I'll get all my surgeries done by those people because the way I don't vasectomy perfect. Can I schedule that with this guy? Uh, Let me ask you something. So, so, so you 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 had awesome. a surgery, yeah. and she told you you was a fan. You didn't scare she was gonna knock you out and look between your legs. Uh, please take a picture, post <laughs> it, put some of my dates on it. <laughs> she came in and she was like, "You can tell, you can tell when someone's a fan because their eyes, you, their eyes light yep. up." And the curtain opened, and she looked at me. And her eyes were wide open. I was like, "What's up?" And she's like, "I got to tell you, I'm geeking out. I'm so excited that I'm on your team." And I was like, oh, are you a fan? She's like, yeah. As soon as I heard she was a fan, all of a sudden I get relaxed. I get very comfortable and I go, cool. And then another dude came back and he's like, dude, we're all fans. I can't wait. This is going to be really cool. And then they're like, so wait, tell us, like, I've been following you. Is this, you know, is this, is this what happened in, when you were in Serbia? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, oh shit. Like it's, it was really cool. And then my anesthesiologist was fucking amazing. I got to be honest with you. I would actually pay out of pocket to have him put me under anywhere because his energy was so good. He was like, pick a song to go out to. And I was like, what? You know what it did for me? Um, I wish I was better with analogies. My analogies are off today. But he gave me something else to focus on. Mm-hmm. I didn't think about my surgery anymore. Mm-hmm. Now I was focused on what such an interesting task of mm-hmm. what song will I go out to? We talked you mean about you it. You go for to like, sleep to. To go yeah, to sleep yeah. to. Because I just had a, uh, what's that thing when they go up your ass? Colonoscopy. Colonoscopy. Yeah, I just had that. Mm-hmm. And I don't think the African dude who did mine, I don't think he treated me right. I just don't think he I just think he, he anesthesiologist he, or the guy that put it up your ass well the guy who put it up my ass because I, I I don't know who the anesthesiologist well I just all I remember him saying you're gonna go you know you count backwards and I went out but when I when I got up you know and got got back to my put my clothes on I think they put my no I got no I got dressed and 
it just fucking yellow shit just kept running and Ugh. you know I said I said I don't think my bowels were clean because you know your bowels got to be clean you got to yeah. be shitting water yeah. yeah but brown shit kept running I said I don't think they did me right no I don't and then my booty hole was kind of oh, ruptured God. you know it was a little sore on the outside so uh. I said I said I think he went so up in there too get, fast I'm so excited to get this procedure I'm supposed to have one I don't want it <laughs> she no said thanks. they gang banged me <laughs> Shit. And my mouth was sore. Like my, like my mouth was like crazy. I, I had weird said, dreams of guys going, "You need to watch this." <laughs> I said, "I don't think they treated my booty hole right because the shit, you know, it was a little sore back there." I said, "I think they used the wrong side too, but some I'll, shit." I'll, let me. I the first time I heard of that, I I was I want to say it was either I might have been Segura who was getting one or got one. And I go, they put you under it for that? He was like, yeah. can you imagine if you're awake? <laughs> oh, <laughs> God, not if your booty right? hole is tight. Yeah. Oh, you can't take that kind of pressure. You have been constipated, headed, coming out the right way? I'm constipated now because of taking pain pills. But I don't really mind constipation. <laughs> you well, know, then mind, you're not really I mind, constipated. I don't mind constipation, and I also don't mind diarrhea. Like, I, but, when people get know, upset oh for God. having diarrhea... I'm always shocked, and I go, I love diarrhea. Like that's gross. I love diarrhea. That's so gross. Because you know you're getting it all. You're out. not constipated if you don't mind it. Constipation is uh, painful. Like diarrhea? Yeah, yeah, I like diarrhea. No, I don't. Like, I like I'm, diarrhea if I'm trying to lose weight and I took some eggs legs. I'm always. Oh my god, how you great like is the that? results of diarrhea? Yeah, I like the results yeah. of diarrhea, but not Let's the clean actual that diarrhea. But, but I tell you, when they give you that medication to, I mean, when they give you that liquid stuff to take. For your colonoscopy, that is the best shit. Oh my god, I lost like twelve pounds shitting. Ooh. I, you, cause your intestine is so fucking long. I was just blowing the toilet to hell ah. and back. I had to buy a new ring, the seat. Oh my god, cause you were oh the splash pack. <laughs> I had to buy a new ring. <laughs> that shit was powerful. You were you getting it done, and it get in your hair cause your weave <laughs> hanging back. I was like, oh shit, <laughs> you're getting my wig the in your hair. <laughs> oh, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Oh that shit, I lost like twelve pounds doing that. Why can't we me. just take that today? I'll I know. Today. I wish. I tried. I was like, can you please write my prescription for that? But they won't. Oh, man. They said, because you just can't do that shit all the time. I'm going to get skinny as fuck. Me too. I I'm, just want to, I just want, I just want to see my vagina. Oh. I, I, can I tell you, I judge how skinny I am based on if I can see my dick on a toilet. I've if I sit on dick. a toilet. I can, you ain't like, lost no weight. I've seen your dick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you have. You definitely have seen my dick. Yes, I forgot about that. Has. I thought you were just joking, and I was like, no, no, no. No, she saw it. Yeah. <laughs> she did. She saw it. We did not do a threesome. I forgot we did the cabin. We did not do a threesome. I saw, I I saw the, the filmed version of you seeing it from the cabin. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I got edit. a lot of pushback for that shit. I saw you. you got I a lot forgot. of pushback? Yeah, I did get a lot of pushback for that cabin shit. They were calling me racist. Me, oh, I said, eat I my ass upside down. Well, I forgot that we did the cabin. I really forgot we did the cabin. I forgot what it was. Yeah, it was It was fun. <laughs> they was like, you're so fucking mean. You ruined the cabin. I said, and you ruined your mama pussy when you came out backwards. Oh, that was oh, my seat. When we talk about having those uncomfortable conversations mm-hmm. about race, that's what I loved about that episode. Was it got It got uncomfortable, but you know, it's it's, and, I, and I'll say on Kaylee's behalf is that it's one of those things like the 85 South show where I go, I'm going to go, I'm going to have a blast. I know that there's a lot like that people can construe what I'm going to say on that show and make me seem like a bad guy. But for me, as a fan of the show, it's kind of worth it because I like the show. I get a kick out of those guys. Uh, fucking Chico Bean with his hair. When he said, I'm, I've am i always worn braids. I followed that whole journey of his hair, of him growing his hair out. I could not stop. I enjoyed that so much on such a different level where we're like, we're, we're like, I don't understand. I don't think he understands what I liked, why I liked it so much. Can we talk to him about that? Fucking DC Young Fly is possibly one of the most uh, positive energy motherfuckers in the world. Mm-hmm. I watched him go back to his high school on a separate video to just go back. And I watched him get lunch at his high school. And I've never, I had the biggest smile on my face watching him fill up a plate full of lunch from his old high school. Like, mm-hmm. and, but I, I, it's worth it for me. Kaylee, I think left and thought this wasn't worth it for me. This- well, I, I think, you know, when you, and I wasn't trying to be rude. I was just being mean. And when you don't know me, you can take it the wrong way. When I said, who fuck is you? I don't know you. I knew who Joel McHale. Hell, I yeah. still talk to Joel McHale yeah. at least once a month now. But I think, 
the re- they never had that rejection before. Well, nobody knows who you are and say it out loud. And nobody said in your face, who the fuck blackwashed Big Bang Theory? Not that it was, you know, it wasn't for me. I mean, it did nine years or so. So it had to be a good show. Somebody was fucking watching it. Yeah. I was just being honest from my perspective. And that's what's wrong with society. Everybody's scared to say what the fuck they're thinking. If you don't like, everything ain't for everybody. Mm-hmm. And I'm a 49-year-old black woman. And I should be able to tell a white woman, I don't know who you are. I don't give a fuck if you is worth a hundred million dollars. I've never seen you before. But then you told me you played on the show that John Riddle died on. And yeah. I said, you was a daughter. I, but I never noticed her on the, on the show because yeah. I was a John Riddle fan. So I didn't look at nobody else but John Riddle. I, I, that's all I remember about that show yeah. was him. I wasn't trying to be rude. I wasn't trying to be racist. I was being honest. I was just bit, and that's what's wrong with the world. You can't be honest to a white girl or people Especially when she worked for hundred million dollars. Oh, and then when she played the victim, oh, I'm so scared. Why the fuck are you scared of me? I'm the nicest motherfucker you ever gonna meet. I ride and die for you, bitch. That's where I. That's where I. I probably. I probably fucked up because I. I wasn't. I technically. I think I was drinking. So I wasn't hosting. Everybody was drinking. It was like a brandy yeah. tasting. Yeah, it was a whiskey. whiskey. It was a whiskey tasting. tasting. Or something, yep. And I probably should have jumped in because I had had a similar experience with Lunell where I thought Lunell didn't like me and I couldn't turn a corner with it. And I, cause I, I kept all I was hearing was how she was saying things as opposed to what she was saying. Yeah. And Donnell and red played, uh, played a liaison for me in that moment. And, and now to this day, I was just texting with Lunell the other day. So like, I'm cool with Lunell, but they made me, they got me to understand that I should have been done a better job of negotiating the waters between you and Kaylee because I, I couldn't I I couldn't explain trust me if she doesn't like you, she she's going to let you know that she doesn't like you. It's not you, You're you talking about Miss Pat. Miss Pat, yeah, yeah. You can't you can't judge how she's saying it. It's what she's saying. The thing anyway, is, I would imagine if you didn't like her, you'd be real quiet. Yeah, I want to fuck with her. Yeah, exactly. But I thought she was yeah. really That's pretty. Right. And yeah. when you told me who she was, I was like, oh, the girl from the Big Bang thing. I never really I never watched the episode, honest to God. I never watched an episode of the Big Bang Theory. I didn't know yeah. who she was, but she was really pretty. And when, and later on, I googled. I said, "Bitch, worth a hundred million dollars. Who the fuck give a fuck if I give a, if I didn't watch it?" Well, you I know? think, and I think, well, I think that's the same thing. Is Kaylee was put in a precarious situation where to? It's like it's in a weird she way. She probably like, never met nobody like me. I would I would assume, and, and that's sure it's team. unfair for me to assume that Kaylee uh, wouldn't know someone like you and and have someone like you in her private circle. I'm judging that based on her the fact that I think her her husband is a uh, is an heir, and, and is, she's also born and raised in Southern California. She's from and here. She's been in, she's been in. So she was a nice telebo- girl. She's I mean, great. She, I she think was she, great. She, she it told- bums me out that she did not have a good time. It bums me out that she regretted it. It bums me out that she's been fairly vocal to a, a few enough important people that it's come back to me that how how much she hated that 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 experience. And it, and because I go, that was never my intention. My intention was to introduce one of my favorite people to to Hollywood types. Joel and Kaylee are are different. They're they're mm-hmm. Hollywood types. They're they know agents and they know showrunners and they know they know, they do stuff that we don't do. We are in the clubs. We are in podcasts. We do television too, but we don't come at television the, the way, way they, they do. do. We mm-hmm. come at it like we can. I can play Bert. You can play Pat. If you want to do a derivation of that, we can play those characters too. But we're, we're probably, I'm not going to play a flight attendant, you know, on Kaylee's show because that it's a little out of my fucking swing zone. Yeah, up, right. You know, Kaylee's a very trained, great a, fucking actress. Right. Who's got. Hey, when I went home, when that when that aired, I got up that morning and watched it when you dropped it. And um, my husband's like, my husband said, how the fuck you not know who Kelly Coso is? I said, well, how the fuck do you know who she is? And he was like the Big Bang Theory. Yeah. And then he went on and say what she did in her childhood. I said, well, I don't know that. Yeah. I don't watch those movies. I don't, I just, I mean, I'm honest. Yeah. I mean, and and maybe, you well, know. It's the beauty of being where you are in your career where you go, I don't, I'm not going to do a song and dance for you. I'm not going to do a song and dance not. for any fucking For body. anybody, nor should you have to. And when, nor should and that's she what took to. me the most when I went up to Joel McHale and said, when I said, what's up, uh, Ryan Seacrest? And he was like, you got it, Lizzo. I was like, yes. 
personality. It fucking made me laugh. Yeah. But when 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 I was approached with her, and you was like, uh, I don't, I don't know. I said I've never watched it. I said who the fuck watched the Big Bang Theory? And I could see the life come out of her face. I was not trying to be rude. Really yeah. nice, beautiful girl. I don't know why she played. Oh, I'm so scared of you. You don't have to be scared of me. I'm the nicest bitch you ever met. I will fight for you if you my fucking friend. Well, that's I just think, how I am. Like I was talking about earlier with my trainer, where the person I work out with, with him thinks he's yelling at her all the time. And I don't hear it as yelling. Yeah. This, I mean, it's different. Not, not just because he's black, but because he's in the South. And that's how my coaches talk to me when I was in sports. They yell, but they're not yelling. It's not an aggression. It's a passionate way of talking. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think it's overall, a different, very different. Overall, I'm a, I'm, I'm a pretty nice person. You're very do nice I get a little person. loud? Yes, I do. But, I mean, you'll see that when you watch the TV show that comes out August 12th, too. You're like, well, goddamn, Miss Pat. But I'm I'm that person in your family that's going to be honest with you. And that's who the fuck yeah. I am. I don't know nothing else. I don't go and eat these people fancy meals. I don't throw up in the bathroom. Well, sometimes I do because shit don't go all the way down. But, um, <laughs> you know, I'm just real about it. I, yeah. I don't, I'm not going to let this industry change me. That's why I live in Indiana. I don't yeah. have to fucking get a BBL to, for my ass to look like a turkey leg for me to fit in. Hell, I'm a nine in Plainfield, Indiana. It will. The, the, the thing the thing about it's so funny. I've dealt a lot with uh, with episodes that we've shot of the cabin. I, I feel like I never got to promote it because it came out during the quarantine. Mm. And I feel like I haven't really talked about it at all. But, you know, what I I I. I I feel bad. I really do feel bad for Kaylee because I feel like it was a missed opportunity for her to meet someone that I thought she would like forever. And you guys are in the same industry. And I do think she would look at what you're doing with your show and respect it as someone who's done multicam as someone who's excelled at the highest level of multicam and is now an executive producer. I think she just signed a big deal with Disney plus or something yeah. of, or something like that. <clears throat> I think you guys would find a common ground. I think I was the wrong go between. Because I that may be accurate, and, and actually. I I love, I love, and it was also awkward because you were figuring out what this show was about as you're shooting it, like you just described earlier, where you get let's just get it made and get it started, and I'll make it my own. And it was, I mean, I was there that day, and I was listening, and I thought there's if there were some a better structure going on here, this would have moved to a different place very easily. But there was no structure, so I think there was just a combination of a lot of things well, happening the, in the that big, moment. The, the, thing, Not that, just the your, thing that pivoted everything was, and this is this is the difference between saying like um, I have a black friend, or or saying or or people that don't say that, like mm -hmm. like uh, Jimmy Tatro is. I use I'm used him as an example a few times. He's a very good, good example of a of a of a solid dude who is what you would say is woke, but he, he would never say that about himself mm -hmm. in a million years. But he is very on the right side of everything. He would never tell you, "I have a black friend." Mm -hmm. He just has so many that it would never be something that comes up in his life. Mm -hmm. And the way he grew up, that he was just it, he just, just doesn't friends. see it. He doesn't see it like that. Right? They're just friends. Whereas also, like one of the conversations that came up was. Um, about Michael Vick. And and I know because I have enough black friends to know that 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 is more a story about the way white America sees black people mm -hmm. as opposed to as opposed to dog fighting. It, did, is, we, is, did it come up on the cabin? It came up on the cabin. And, and that her? is when between you and her, because she is a big animal rights activist. Oh, that's right. And you said one of my favorite players is Michael Vick. And I w tried to stop it right there and go, hold on. Miss Pat isn't advocating dog fighting nor anything he did. What she's saying is that I'm a Falcon fan, a, a Falcon mm -hmm. fan, but more important, by the way, he was one of the best goddamn fucking quarterbacks you've yes. ever seen play. What he did was so magical that the, that it's, it's overwhelming when you watch this highlight hey. reel. But more importantly, what happened was, is that a lot of people in the black community see going to prison and doing your time as redemption. And that is, you need to and, say, and white society don't. And, so yes. let me ask you something. And and, and, me, and I feel bad having this conversation with Kaylee not here to defend herself. But this was one of the things that came up that made things awkward. Where I said you can't you say can't. you don't forgive Michael Vick because you, in essence you're saying Pat as a convicted felon. I also don't forgive you. Yeah, I don't forgive and anyone I also who's don't been give to prison. A fuck. Yeah, I also I don't, don't give a fuck. Right? Yeah, because everybody deserves a second That's chance right. except yes. murderers and child molesters. That's what I believe. Um. 
if you everybody makes mistakes, mm-hmm. you know, but this world want to cancel the fuck out of you so mm-hmm. fucking quick. Yeah. Michael Vick made a major mistake. Yeah. Being around a ro- not fucking cutting the loosest pass. Yeah. I am big. I mean, I'm here today because I got a second chance. Yeah. I mean, but you would take this black man, ruin his fucking career, and lock him up. Lock him up for dog fight. But Rosselberger allegedly supposedly raped many bitches. They've said Rosselberger have been 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 inappropriate with women. What the fuck his name is? No, I, um, uh, one, right now is the one time he's like, "Thank God she's not pronouncing my name yeah. right." <laughs> Ross, but, but I know that, nobody, about. nobody ever did anything. Yeah, I mean, and nobody even tried to prove anything. And I don't know if it's true. I hope it's not because I'm a fan of him too. But yeah. everybody, this you got to give people a second chance. Mm-hmm. People fuck up. I'm here. I'm a I'm a prime example of what a second chance can do. Some people get. Some people need two and three fucking chances. It was a bigger. It was a bigger. But because you're an animal rights activist, and, and I tell you that I like fucking. I tell every white motherfucker, black motherfucker, Asian, anybody that'll listen to me. You know, Miss Pat like Michael Vick. I had a woman say, "I'm not coming to see you because of Michael Vick." I said, "I don't give a fuck." When well, you want me to see you some puppy child, <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Michael you're not Vick. gonna make me bow down to you. You know I. I mean, you cannot make me. I believe what I fucking believe. Yeah. Everybody deserves. And I might get in trouble for this. Somebody said, uh, "I can't believe you. You are. Uh, uh, you performing at the same club. What's the guy's name who just got in trouble? The comedian who, who back on the road now. Which one? Who just got on the road? Getting back on the road. Uh, who jacking his dick in Bill front of Cosby? the girls? Louis C.K. Louis C.K. Louis C.K. I get a lot of this in my inbox. Uh, how dare you p- p- perform at a club that Louis C.K. perform at? Look at here, people. I gotta eat. Leave me the fuck alone. You take that up with that club. Louis C.K. Yeah. gotta eat. I don't got nothing to do about that. I don't know Louis C.K. Great comedian. Eating jack his dick in front of me. Leave me the fuck alone about yeah. Louis C.K. He violated women. I don't. I don't have nothing to do with that. Leave me. I get this. Yeah. I've got at least fifty emails. You should cancel. No. What the fuck am I not going to eat because Louis C.K. coming to a club I perform it. Ain't a, if I can't do nothing about that, nope. it ain't like he left comms on the seats. And I'm about to right? phone the microphone. <laughs> it's not your business. It's the club's business. The cl- it, it, that's nothing to do with you. That's the stupidest yeah. thing I've ever heard. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, th- I think that's a... It's a, it's a and I get that a lot. It. Do you ever get that? Well, you haven't no. been on the road. You, no. you, well, you he theaters. doesn't read his email. So, no, yeah. I get that shit and delete it. Yeah, I'm like, what is wrong with you people? I I cannot. I have have a family to feed, and because this man play a club, I cannot. I cannot cancel my gig. Let me say this: I believe in second chances. I am a Michael Vick fan. Michael Vick have gotten out of jail and proven himself to be a law a law abiding citizen. He, he, you, you know what I'm yeah. saying? He's working for he's working for ESPN. He's working for the owner of the Falcon. He turned his life around. Why is it that we cannot forgive what this man did? Why can't you celebrate that? Because Why can't you celebrate? Isn't that, that the point? Well, and here's the isn't other thing, that, is that a a a an example of someone going to prison and reforming? Isn't that's that what, that's what, what prison is for? Exactly. Prison is not for you to go to jail, get and out, and you there. still no. motherfucking hating on them. Yeah, it's, it's for he, reform. To and learn and, and it, it, there's a great documentary on on what happened to Michael Vick that I think is on ESPN Plus. I wouldn't even watch it. I it's, know it's it's a good it's documentary. A, a, wasn't it a 2020, 20 for 20 or something? 20 Everybody was like, you yeah, gotta watch my. 30. I said, <laughs> uh, thirty for thirty. What the fuck it was? Um, I'm a fan, and I remember meeting Michael Vick at the Atlanta airport, and um, I was coming out of he was I think he was coming out of Delta conference and I, I mean the delta lounge and i was getting ready to go in there and i see this big old tall black guy standing there with his expensive ass louis vuitton book but i said oh that's a fucking that's made by seven thousand dollars who the fuck is that some shades had a hood on it you know hoodie on the head i said that's somebody famous now look i said michael vick oh my fucking god michael vick and he was in i'm in the process of writing my show and i wanted him to be on it so bad yeah. and so i said uh i said oh my god i said i'm such a big fan when you went to jail i fucking went just i fucking love you michael vick i just love you and i tried so hard to write him in this show i because he was such a big era of when when i lived in atlanta yeah so i tried but we we just couldn't fit him in but michael vick i'm coming to get your ass we're gonna i don't give a fuck if i gotta race you I'm coming to put. No. I'm gonna race you. Well, here's the thing that that I I think so, I I think people certain people see atrocities people com- commit and they're personalized. Mm-hmm. You know, whereas sometimes they're not so personalized. And uh, like 
when the Louis stuff happened. I, I feel bad even talking about it, but I do think it's worth worth the conversation. But when the Louis stuff happened, I remember saying to Leanne, and Leanne was a little more like trying to explain to me why that was so wrong. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, but he asked their permission. Like, how are you going to know if you're going to jack off in front of one? Like, what if you like jacking off in front of people? You're kind of like, you got to ask, right? She's like, yeah, but it's different. There's a power structure. And I, di- I I don't think I totally, I understood a little bit. She gave me an analogy. She's like, like, for instance, if you were in a hotel room and and I forget the name you used was a, a cage fighter at the time. You're like, and, uh, but I'm, I forget who it was, but I'll say like Brock Lesnar said to you, hey, I'd like to jerk off in front of you. How do you feel about that? You don't get an option to say no because he is going to jack off in front of you because he's Brock Lesnar. He's like 290 pounds. He's got a spear tattooed down his chest. He's jacking off. You don't get a say in that. So she was like, that's kind of what it is. And then, you know, is what's really interesting is when we shot this movie, halfway through this movie, I thought, I think I understand a little better. I never really worked in a work environment before. I never really had a job where it was like a work environment. You mean like a broad uh, cross-section of people? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I thought thought to myself, I I talked to Andrew about it, and I went, I think I get why it was, why what Louis did was so bad, because I can't imagine asking anyone in that environment Hey, is it cool if I jack off in front of you? That's right. very it was, uncomfortable. It's yes. very uncomfortable. And a woman comedians, those female comedians, am I right? Yeah. So say for instance, I look at it like this. You you really want the opportunity to open for somebody like Louis and big comedians. Oh, you want the opportunity to go on the road. But then you you don't want to fuck it up. You know, and, and this person said, this is a power struggle. They was like, well, do you mind if I, I jack off in front of you? Well, you really want the gig. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you really want you, you want to show that you, you know, you're a team player, I guess. And you, you know, you don't want to be confrontational. So you probably wouldn't answer yes or no. And, it, and, and that person would take it as a yes and whip their dick out. Yeah. Even though you're fucking uncomfortable and you go, because I've worked for uncomfortable I've opened it for un- uncomfortable people that I had to take that uncomfortable for five fucking years being treated like a dog. Yeah. No hotel. I, by the way, I did too. Yeah, no pay. Motherfuckers yeah. talking to you any kind of way. You know, it's no different than what he did. Yeah. You know, so as a as a comedian who coming up, you know, larger comedians sometimes shit on us. Yeah. And so yeah. you you want the gig, so you take you kind of take the bullshit. It's a it's a unfair leverage. Yes, they have leverage to get what they want because they know you won't say no, and, even if they ask. And you know the women, you know the women, and the women probably wasn't strong enough to say, "Don't you take your frecker face dick out of my face?" Yeah. You know and what I'm saying? I've had off-putting. comedians try to show me their dick, and I said, "Look, don't play with me, bitch. I'm married. Don't yeah. you fucking play with me." Yeah, I'm, I didn't come out here to suck no dick for no gigs. Yeah. But I mean, I'm also a strong person. I can say that. Yeah. The, you know, I don't know the women. I don't know who the comedians were. Maybe they wasn't strong enough. Maybe they wasn't comfortable enough. And I'm not saying what he did wasn't wrong. All I'm saying is stay the fuck out of my inbox. I don't got nothing to do with this shit. Yeah. No. Well, yeah, I'm just trying to feed that, my fucking family. I'm still friends with Louis. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm just so that we're clear. I've, I've emailed him a couple times. Like, I'm still friendly. I don't, we don't hang out or anything. I'm still friendly with Louie and I, and I do believe in a second chance, I do. but I also believe that I, it's my responsibility to kind of do the math and think like, and think, okay, so a lot of people are upset about this. Maybe I'm not wrapping my head around it yet. Cause it's a, when it first happened, I was like, he asked and they said, yes, like that's how consent works. And then all of a sudden I worked on the set and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't imagine. Consent I can't doesn't imagine. work exactly like Consent that. doesn't work like that. Consent especially when you're in a work in a area. Workplace, I'm sure this is all like stuff. Louie is doesn't care to hear about it it being talked over again and it's very old but it's it's worth going like oh wow that's crazy that what now five years after that happened i really wrap my head around it and go in the end just respect people yeah Yeah. just respect people everybody not into that creepy freaky shit my hairstylist was a freak but i'm not sucking dick like she do yeah i'm not fucking flying off a mountain and jumping on top of dicks you know, I like my dick to roll over on top of me and I go to bed. That's my preference. Right. Respect. You know, when she called me one day, so put ice in your mouth and suck dick. I'm not getting up going to get no ice. My motherfucking back wheels are too hurt. Right there, Leanne. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Hold your breath there, big boy. Hold your breath. <laughs> Fuck him. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is the dumbest shit ever. Why would you want me to freeze my husband's dick? Oh. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's what, it's what, it's, it's, you know, 
in the end, just respect people. Just I think that's I think that's what it, it comes down to. And and I have a t-shirt that say we don't have to agree, but we do need to respect each other. Y'all yeah. go buy so I can buy them some more hair. <laughs> <laughs> we uh yeah, I I that documentary on Michael Vick, the one thing that I my one takeaway was just how how the group he was with, you know, it's it's funny. I, I wonder how little I would have changed if I stayed friends with the guys I was friends with in high school. You have to cut people. Everybody can't go to the top with you. You have to, everybody don't see what everybody. First of all, most of the people you come up with don't have the talent you have. Second of all, you can't take everybody with you. I'm my career starting to change, and they say I'm mean. I'm I'm not mean, but when you have people out here putting your business out on the internet, what you make it, and you you you, I see people recording people running to TMZ, and people are like, why oh, I can't look? I don't want nobody new around me. I don't I, know what the I, fuck I'm I gonna definitely say. Definitely feel like that. Yes, I, I stay like the that. fuck. I don't want your friends around me. I don't want nothing around me new. I am very I don't fucking. Like, that's fucking I don't, really yes, accurate. Because people wants to make money because they ain't got no motherfucking money. They ain't got no talent. You be done said the wrong motherfucking thing because I know how I talk at my goddamn house. Yeah. I know how I get down. You be recording me like motherfucking, um, uh, what was that? Gospel singing son? Kurt Franklin's son recorded him cussing and, and the whole, go- oh my God, Kurt Franklin's curse. Hell yeah, he cursed. He bitchy at home and he's a fucking, he's a human being. Yeah. I don't have time for that. That one little shit can ruin my whole fucking career that I worked my ass off because you decided mm. or I decided to let the wrong goddamn person in my circle. Look at Kevin Hart. Had this person in his circle for all those years and fucking tried to get $10 million out of it. Yeah. The more you get, the more they want to take and the more paranoid I have become. Fuck you. I got them at the point where my kids gonna have to sign an NDA. <laughs> <laughs> I would love if my kids sign an NDA. Yeah, I mean, I'm, th- that's at the point because you just it, it's this is an ugly business. And people do people do want to take especially when you start to do good. It's funny, like people root for you to do good, root for you to do good. I have a good. T-shirt to say, "Congratulate haters, motherfucker who congratulates you but really hating on you." It's interesting how many people do start to dislike you when you succeed. Who all? They when they thought you weren't a threat, they loved you. This is their word. Um, you don't change, no motherfucker. You change, yeah, because you haven't gotten over the point that uh, I'm beginning to move on. So when you don't make that person, when they've been there, and then you don't make them a part of what you're doing now, all of a sudden you change, and there's a problem with you. It's not a problem with me, bitch. It's a problem with you. I got the same phone number. I ain't changed what for shit. Do you, Bert? I got two layaways. I got to get back to motherfucking Indianapolis and pick up. That's how real I am. I still <laughs> do fucking layaways. I love them. They it's fucking po people credit cards. Yeah. <laughs> put the- you put that ten percent down, and you make uh, sure you get it out in ninety fucking days. I remember hearing about layaway for the first time, and I told my dad, "Why don't we just put it on layaway?" And my dad was like, "What the fuck did you just say?" I was like, probably nine years old, and I was like, "Well, the bunch of us put it on layaway, Dad." And we put it on layaway. He's like, "The fuck are you talking about layaway? You want you're nine years old. You want to put stuff on layaway?" And I was like, "Seems like it fucking works." My yeah. whole life was layaway growing up. Hell That's yeah, what we sunshine. Bought everything. Yep. Sunshine had that layaway. Woolworth oh, had that layaway. Did. This is down south shit. Yeah. Woolworth had layaway. Yeah. yeah, back in the day they did. And you were going there. Well, back in the day when we was young, right? So my mom and everybody on deal, so we would go down to Woolworth and rope the deal and up on our own. And you spray that Primo on your pussy. Oh my God. if you like, if you like Georgia, you're gonna love Primo. It was a knockoff of all the perfect. <laughs> yes, I you had Primo. That's why bees be trying to sting your pussy. <laughs> <laughs> That's Giorgio Primo. I'm with you. <laughs> uh, it was in a yellow can. It and was, it, yeah. <laughs> had stripes that went this way, right? Yep. Yeah, that was at Woolworth, and they had a whole aisle of that shit. Thank if you like, if you like this, you are gonna love this. It was a knockout, <laughs> but it was really be repellent. <laughs> it was not be repellent. That's exactly what it was. How funny! God. So wait, how long you in LA for? Uh, I'm here for a few days promoting the TV show and um, with podcasts, and then I'm back. Uh, gonna do a little small South little premiere in New York and do some other. So when so is the is the show out right now? No, August twelfth. August twelfth. What did you get? Four episodes. I got the pilot. Oh, got the pilot. Yeah. So it's, and it's, I loved it. I know I said you. it earlier, but I really freaking you gotta it. watch it, Bert. I will. So Joe watched it right. Yeah. And it's hard to get Joe to watch it. Yes. So it I is. said he's like Pat. 
it's hard to make a sitcom. Hey, I love you. And I really don't want to watch my friend's stuff because I don't want to be. I said, well, you can always fucking be honest with me. I said, and if you be honest with me, it means a lot. Just yeah. watch it. So he, I said, where are you? If you don't mind me asking, he said, I'm in the middle of rain here. You see, I can't even pronounce the shit. It just sounded like wherever the fuck he was at, waterfall just falling blue with yeah. butterflies flying <laughs> up under it. That's what I imagine. Because that's the type of fucking money Joe Rogan got. So <laughs> I said, he said, I'm on vacation with my family in the Mediterranean. What, what, you know what I'm trying to say. Mediterranean? So, yeah, that shit. <laughs> and I don't even know what the fuck the Mediterranean is. So <laughs> It's far away. You don't yeah. need to know. So so he said, I'm going to watch it. I sent him the clip. And he watched, as he watched it, he texted me, he said, I think you got a fucking hit. It's so good. And I'm telling like, you. And he started cl- in one line in there. He was like, uh, uh, "Did you teach your daddy how to? Uh, did you teach your daddy how to lick a click?" And he just fell out laughing. Yeah. And and he just kept going and kept going and kept going. And to see Rogan texting me back. Uh, you know, from just little jokes and stuff yeah. we wrote, and I was like, "Oh, not bad." He's like, "You did." He said, "Pat, the hardest part is to make the pilot. It is yeah, the hardest. That's the hardest part. The hardest part because you know people expect the pilot to be all right and then walk your way up, but this pilot yeah. is really fucking strong. The series is really strong. I mean, there was times I had to really fight with the sh- with with showrunners and writers, and I was like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, I heard that joke. Take that shit out." No, motherfucker, we ain't using that whack ass shit. And you know, doing this taping, I had to get a um, I had to get a um, uh, what did I have to get, Quisha? The uh a life coach. Because I went in there gangster. Uh therapist. They sent me the therapist. In real life? They did? Why? Yeah, because, because of the way you were talking to people? Or? Yeah, I was like, we ain't gonna do that, motherfucker. Hell no, nah, that whack ass shit. So they had to teach me. You can't say whack ass shit. You ain't shit. Oh, corny ass. You ain't nigga. shit. <laughs> you can't tell a writer you ain't shit, Pat. <laughs> no, you can't tell them that. Corny ass nigga. You can't say oh that <laughs> to writers that you don't know and, you know, that you didn't hide. And it was like, this is not professional. I said, well, I'm a comedian. When you ain't funny, we say you ain't shit. Yeah. So I had to, re- I had to learn how to talk corporate. Oh, that's fucking. How'd you like talking corporate? Uh, I just said. I didn't really do the great. Corporate. If her answer was like, I really enjoyed it, Leanne. Uh, no, I learned a great deal. <laughs> uh, not what I would say. Uh, let's let's start over. This ain't gonna work. And then I would say, if this joke, if the, if this ain't as good as this joke, then we can't do it. Mm-hmm. We can do better than this. And that was nice. Let me tell you something. You writing a 10, 10 episode show, and no matter if you do how writers when it's so personal, that was every fucking night. Me and the writer stayed up every night Mm -hmm. fixing everybody's strips but that's how you know it's gonna be good and my daughter wrote on the show she did my 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 daughter gary and she wrote the episode by him them and dad and she she nailed it but we had to we had to go over a lot with structure for the for the uh for the uh the co the co-creator but a lot i had to go back and put my voice in there because I was like, this ain't what I would fucking say. Yeah. But, and then I was like, oh, I could put this old joke here. Mm-hmm. So it, it was very hands-on. And I wasn't playing. I was like, y'all not going to have me looking like this shit. Yeah. Well, well you, you, you can't. You great. can't. It was you can't great. have them misrepresent who you are because yeah. who you are, it's, you know, it's... it's uh. And if it does well, that's who you're going to be for years. And that's right? who I've so been you, for 49 gotta, years. Yeah, but I mean, like, if you were playing someone that was so inauthentic, and this show is a big hit. You'd be playing that person that was really on authentic for years. This mother is a convicted felon. This I mother, yes, she and is. See, I loved it. And the mom. Most of the time, you see men taking on. You see, you see the the woman holding down the household. Well, my husband holding down the household in this show. While well, I go and try to follow my comedy career, he does the cooking and the cleaning. Mm-hmm. So it's a reverse role because that's what it is in my real life. Yeah. So I mean. I'm not Claire Hustler, like I said uh, earlier. I'm not, I can't fucking cook. If I go in the kitchen, my kids will stab me in my motherfucking neck. I better be buying a toaster or something or painting the cabinets, but I better not try to cook. Yeah. So th- that's what that's what I loved about the show. The roles were reversed. I mean, I'm not just chopping vegetables. I'm out there following my dreams, and he got my back like in real life. Yeah. It was so good. Here's what I really hope, and you know, Bert stole your portion of that I was supposed to get by myself today. So I didn't get you all to myself. So at some point you have to come back and just do my podcast. Okay. Because I hope when I want to talk to you about your I'll book. Tell you what, how about this? How about this? Mm-hmm. How about this? Mm-hmm. I'll, I'm going to go in and get a coat hanger and itch my arm. 
what you do your part right now and then you can include our portion and you can open with this portion on your podcast so you guys do whatever what time is it it's one o'clock what time you have to be out of here do like 15 20 minutes by yourselves huh? what time you need to leave here by one rage call why you oh i sure do i gotta fucking mean that too okay you'll be fine it, on the phone or you got to drive somewhere? Mm-mm, just on the phone. Okay, why don't you guys, I'm going to go get a coat hanger and itch my arm. Mm-hmm. Why don't you do that part about her book okay. by yourselves? Okay. And then you can open your, okay po- that, you way, that way you can yeah. get a double release. Okay. We'll put, we'll put all of what we just did and then you can open your podcast with this. Okay. And then connect, and then put all the other stuff onto it too. You're so okay. fucking smart. Get the fuck out. He is very smart. Right? <laughs> Pat, you know I love you. I love you. I always got your back. Go eat your own. Fuck Kelly Cuoco. I'll burn her house down for you. <laughs> Don't say that. You can't get behind the gates. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get on the street without getting shot. <laughs> <laughs>